I was. There we go. I was a Skype guy back in the day, but I'm still a Skype guy. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's crap, it's so terrible. But there's, there's still, I like the audio quality. We only use it for audio. It's great mm. for dual syncing. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some beeps and a clap so you can do. If we have to dual sync, we'll be able to. Anderson makes fun of me for this. Okay. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> beep. Uh-huh. Beep. Beep. Am I supposed to do it at the same time? Nope. Okay. Just on the waveform, you'll be able to see three distinct beeps and a clap on both of our. Uh, oh, that, I, love that. I love that. I love that. Thank you. And it does Actually, it perfectly for you. No, I get it because I and I'm still very new at audio editing, film editing, and and like you know. Even just video editing, not film editing, but so. Oh, you haven't and, made many films, Mitch. <laughs> I have not made a single one. I don't uh, know, man. I don't know if I should be on the show. Uh, yeah, cool. no. Fingernails, by the way, uh, for people who aren't watching, of course, because it's an audio show. Uh, mm. Mitch has his nails painted, which I don't know if I'm supposed to mention, but it looks like no, it's periwinkle. That's fine. It's it is. Uh, it's blue, and I've yeah, it is as, as blue as it can get. Uh, oh, it's more blue. Yeah. I've been pick. No, it's purpley blue. But uh, I haven't even introduced the show yet, but I so I will have to cut this in later, I guess. Oh, Maybe. we just cut it out. It doesn't matter. But I, the only time yeah. I had my nails painted was at camp in the, what is, 1996, right before Independence Day came out. Everybody was talking about it, about to go see it. I let a girl paint my nails at camp. I was like, you know what? This is a new opportunity. You can just be a free man. You can do whatever you want. You want your nails painted? Let a chick paint your nails. Who cares? The meaning about you. Never had it happen again, and I have no opposition <laughs> to it. Just a weird thing. Like, there was a moment in my life I was like, I'm a dude who gets his nails painted. and never yeah. had it and i'm a custodian i work with a lot of kids um and i like i love seeing them be free and do whatever they want to do and and be who they want to be and i've had several kids be like oh i like your nails and and they're and they're met like little boys like a conversation that both you and freddy krueger have brought bodily yeah. had <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's great i love it and, and and I love your burnt face. Oh no no my <laughs> my face hasn't been burnt. It's just it, it, my last name acne, is burnt. Kid. I had acne. <laughs> how dare you? Actually, I had chicken pox and I, yeah, and I do have like scarring. But thanks I for bringing that do. up. Everybody's got that weird scar above their left eyebrow too. Yeah, it's either from like forceps or like a weird thing that happens. That everybody had happen. Yeah. Like a, everybody gets their head smashed on like a corner, or it's from and, chicken pox. And I have hair that won't grow under here. Because I cut myself self shaving really bad the first time oh. I tried shaving. <laughs> so, anyways, so, uh, three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Film Vaulters. Uh, we are a uh, film vault after show, uh, side show, whatever you want to call it, um, where I will be interviewing people associated with the Film Vault or past you know listeners and past producers current producers maybe um but yeah so this is our second episode i obviously did my first episode with mrs florence bremer um so you can find that wherever podcasts are found and today i'm very 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 lucky to have our second guest be mr geo johnny himself uh or giovanni how are you, Gio? I'm great. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I think there's like three people in the film vault audience who just don't like me, and they have to hear me. I always feel bad for people have to deal with that because there's some people on podcasts I can't stand. Oh, and when they're on all the time, it like drives me insane. But for the rest of you, uh, hey, how's it going? And for Mitch, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for being on. Do you podcast a lot? Oh, see, that's people don't even know the whole history. <laughs> it's so okay. Sexy. I feel like there's every guy in his late 30s. Uh, who has any tech background has an old podcast he did that when you bring up podcasting they're like they chuckle themselves like oh you don't know my history of podcasting this and is usually, my fifth th- usually they're wrong when they say that because it's just something nobody listened to but i actually uh helped launch the modern comedy podcast with the adam Grola show people don't know what i did what i was involved oh. in that. it's actually oddly involved with me and the film vault and mm-hmm. a bunch of other stuff and uh then from that i had the geo podcast which ran 2010 till uh i think 2014 right about there no 2017 actually because uh, i got the job hosting classic love line officially this whole thing in 2013 uh and then when i that show ended in 2016 and then when that ended people were like i want more of this so i just basically killed my own podcast uh, my own baby i drowned in a bathtub and then i was like <laughs> all right i'll just start doing classic love line in my feed here you guys go so then i just started oh. doing that 
and then for, and by show, which used to be essentially uh, clips of like old love line and then an interview with somebody related to it. That's why I first met Anderson on episode nine. It's a whole long story. We can get into that later too. We'll extrapolate. We'll go to the EXE five and one zip. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's the whole thing. But I interviewed him and the show was like a loose format. I would just find thematic clips, whatever it was, do an interview. It was a very bizarre thing. It was written up in a bunch of articles, pod thoughts by Colin Marshall. Uh, that's a huge deal. It was part of Maximum Fun. Really smart dude. He wrote this brilliant review of it. Uh, the, the release was described as uh, surprising. Like, like this would be like weekly, monthly. Because so I'd come up with like three in a day sometimes and not fun for, run for like a month. Wow. Uh, and it was, it was a really well uh, received thing. It was actually the only thing I've ever done that people liked. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was it was cool. And that was my personal show. And then I had this other thing called Pod Gods I do still with a guy from the message board I met while I was where we film vault actually also originates from. Yeah. And I've never met him in real life. I don't know what he actually looks like. I don't know his real name. We've been doing a podcast together for almost 11 years. Holy and shit. He's my closest friend, and I don't know anything about him. Except I know, like, you know, I know his wife. Uh, yeah, his he has a wife. And, yeah. and I know what industry he works in. Uh, but other than that, uh, wow. know, we're never going to meet. No, I, I, that's what I mean. Like, I live in Canada, and I would love to meet somebody. He also lives in Canada. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And I'd love to DC meet like, area. you and, and, yeah, Anderson one day and Brian. But... Will it ever happen? I don't know. I'd love to take a drive down to L.A. and I've still never met Anderson in person. We've been dodging each other for over a decade. Met okay. Brian several times. You oh, can easily okay. meet both of them. I can arrange for you to meet both of them. That is quite possible. <laughs> Florence can set it up. That is entirely yeah. in the cards for you. It's a $239 plane ticket. I'm sure we can raise the funds. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I'm going to do it. Um, and I would, I mean, if they would let me, I'd love to be, you know, like a little co-host, right, for the day or be there. You know, if Avery's not going to be there, be there. Wow, no, fuck, I can't produce. Never mind. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, but I know. You can probably do it. Uh, it just shows you how to do it. Uh, Brian let a guy produce as a charity winner on the Adam Carolla show of all things. With oh, wow. Guy stepped oh. in, did fine. Yeah, that's good. They can mm. show you how to do it. You can, you'd have fun. It'll be fine. It's um, funny, you're drinking a Corona beer for people who can't see. Mm-hmm. That is a weird BC thing. The last time I had a Corona was in BC. It's a Canada thing for me. I don't know why. Why does Canada like Corona? I feel like I feel like it just wouldn't. I was in a Benny's Bagels and they only had Corona beers. Summer is like, summer is such a big deal for us. And I know that sounds stupid because it is no, a big not. deal for everyone. No, but... it's particular. Yeah. It's like Northwest, and... it's a thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, um, and I drink it because I'm gluten free, and it's the only one that doesn't uh, oh, cool. really affect my stomach as much. Um, gotcha. But yeah, I don't know why it is such a big thing. You wouldn't you expect know? it. You'd be like, they drink yeah, beers in Canada? yeah, they do. Because you go down to Mexico, like, and... you think they're like uh, beer snobs. They're like, no, they won't drink coconut or like uh, some crap they send down here. But other than that, they're totally fine. I will drink everything, like anything, but if I have more than a couple of some that are like, you know, really wheat based, then uh, I'm in the bathroom. So, <laughs> all right, well, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. Um, so, I have the TFV timeline up. I want to get you... right into that. I had a random thought right before we started. Okay. I've never thought this before. Everyone should have thought this. Nobody's brought it up. It's kind of like it's barbarian. There's one uh-huh. guy who hates when the film vault brings it up still, even though it doesn't come up that much. And they're not going to bring up any further, so don't complain. Uh, nobody Barbarian. brought this up. And like the tape list that nobody had put on IMDb until Brian told me to add it there. Uh, what did he do with the Suns? Oh. Okay, so well, for anyone listening, that. what he's talking about is the 2022 movie, horror movie Barbarian, uh, which has been over-talked on the film vault. But, How dare you? Uh, <laughs> I I really like it. I gave it three and a half stars. It's probably a little. Regardless of how much it gets talked about, I just like when they they dig in on a movie, even if it's a movie I don't particularly like. Me too. Sometimes I love even, that. They even shit on stuff I like. Like I, the only movie I ever had them watch was Last Action Hero, and they didn't mm. get it. But you can't get it on the first viewing. It took me seven over thirty years to actually like it. And there's a mm. whole history with everybody saying it was a bomb, and I was a child, and like they forced this idea in my head. And it, and I finally figured out what the movie is, but I can't make them watch it seven times. <laughs> So, oh, if you pay for them to rewatch a movie, they won't do it. They won't do it. I've tried. I said, if I pay you guys to watch it seven times, they're like, no, we won't do that. Well, I, I, that's a really great question. And yeah, in the what? movie Barbarian, there's a thing where there may be babies of some kind. That's uh, some anything. kind. And what did they do with the sons? Yep. I'm not going to tell you what they do with the daughters. 
Uh, no, but what, what do they do with the suns? I, I assume death, but... Uh, yeah, it's got to be, right? It's got to be it's ground inside of the other ones. Yeah. Uh, but, wow, that makes that movie And the other thing that brings up is those catacombs. Was that a uh, literal underground railroad for slaves to escape to Canada? Was it something even more sinister and more ancient? What? What? Because he didn't dig all that. It was connected. See, to me you don't. You, okay, so that's where the movie. I it went right over my head. I was, you know, I'm like, why does this guy have this in his basement and nobody knows about it? What's going? If you look on at the here? construction, it's hand dug until a certain point, and then it's then everything's perfect. And right. there's like a weird arch and like a thing. So maybe like, what, the, what is over there? He must have knew it was there, right? Or stumbled upon it. Yeah. Because he's like, wow, I'm gonna do this horrible plan, and I'm gonna need a place to do this. He's like, what's down here? Oh, well, I just it, happened to dig here, and there's this thing. <laughs> Instead of uh, telling the local government and finding this historical landmark and letting cave explorers come, I'm just gonna throw dead babies there. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> oh my god, uh, yeah. So anyone uh, watch Barbarian? I think yep. any horror. Still not spoil lot. You don't know it. what we're talking about. No, we don't know what we're talking about. No, you'll get halfway through and you still won't know. Yeah. Like, um, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> uh so do we want to go through this the oh i do the i really timeline? like yeah, I, i'm okay. building this timeline up for this interview okay uh, oh because, thank you okay yeah I, awesome. I figured that a lot of people don't know the whole history of the film vault brian and anderson don't actually fully know it we've tried to talk about it on air several times yeah me and uh, anderson brian never talk off air i could call them all the time i don't ever and no. as far as my emails go i'll show you a couple examples like the one with the uh, phoenix Wright. It's mm-hmm. like a paragraph, and they kept saying how long it was. It's like, are you guys? How old are you? Are you like? They just like to over exaggerate. I know, I know but it's really, it's really. Short. I know. I'll, I'll send you a copy. It's funny. They introduced them the idea of Phoenix Wright, which they also enjoyed, which made me uh, made me very happy. But nobody knows this history of TFB, and every time me and Anderson and Brian try to address it, we get so excited talking about other stuff, like we talked to somebody you haven't talked to in a long time. You just yeah. skip over to some other tangent, and it never well, actually gets addressed. When Brian was sick in the hospital, and you got you and Anderson did your episode. Patreon bonus like, episode of the film. Yeah, book. yeah, and he was so he was so ready to get off the phone because he had to go pick up Atticus, yep. and and I was like, it made my it made me anxious because I just wanted to hear more of what you had to say. I know, I know, and, and then, I was living it. <laughs> yeah, and then you would go on another tangent, and he's like, he's like, man, I love you, Gio, I gotta go, and you're like, okay, but, <laughs> <laughs> and it made me so happy. Uh, <laughs> it was a great episode. Uh, it, was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's and... always fun when they, they come out well when you're trying. Sometimes they don't. No, uh, there was an episode. Miss Movies used to have a podcast for a minute, and she interviewed me. And it was oh, a really okay. weird vibe, and like her husband was listening in a corner. I think he was like playing Mortal Kombat. I think it was nine at the time. It was just more ago, <sighs> and uh, he played uh, the character Striker. It's weird. I remember this. I, I don't even know the guy, and I met her at the time. I, I knew her, but it just didn't have good flow. And then she couldn't uh... think of like movie titles and stuff. <clears throat> she like, emailed me a month later, like, "Is it okay if we don't air this?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." <laughs> so I'm on the lost episodes of the Miss Movies podcast. It was so bad as she couldn't air. Does she still have the podcast? I don't no, no, a so. long, long time ago. Yeah, I didn't think so. So it was did. before she started working with the Schmoes and I think before she left TFE. So the, the TFE thing... timeline isn't finished. I only have it up till 2012 so far. It doesn't have the departure of Miss Movies, which wasn't controversial. She just moved on to something else. It wasn't even No, of course. I don't know. She I wasn't was... even like a regular cast member. It was just, it was just weird. No. It was just kind of like, oh, she just helps out and does this. Yeah, and then I was when there. Diana... And... Yeah, it doesn't have when Diana Van Camp came in or Logan's departure or Avery mm-hmm. starting, but I'm going to add all that. And most mm-hmm. listeners kind of know all that stuff, and it's not as eventful. It's just kind of the podcast is independent. Yeah. Producer left. Yeah. Um, different Miss Movies came on. Different Miss Movies came on. Not yeah. a big deal. I mean, the biggest things are the moves from, you know, mm-hmm. the Orange Couch to the uh, – well, where do they go next? Uh, well, well, let's start. Let's start. So let's I start. guess the origins of the TV timeline. We'll start mm-hmm. back in June of 99. Anderson starts working at Loveline. So he he began working with Pharrell, who's like a sports reporter. Oh, radio I was thinking like, he talks uh, like this. He's got like a crazy voice. I was thinking, and, are uh, you happy? Da, da, da. <laughs> not that one. No, no. Okay. That, no that, that guy's great. This is a, a white guy, I'm presuming. I've never actually seen him. Older than okay. Scott Pharrell. He's such a real burnt out guy. And David Letterman's a huge fan of his, oddly enough. That's okay. What Anderson revealed. It's like, what, and what Corolla was, was at Loveline when Anderson started. Yep. Oh. In 99, Corolla had been there since, uh, uh, let's see, he started in October 1st, 95. <clears throat> okay. And Mike Dooley is the engineer. Mike okay. was moving on. He eventually went to the game show network, Price is Right. Oh. He was the engineer for Price is Right for the longest time. I think he still is. Uh, Lakers. Money. He does everything. So wow. Mike was his great engineer. Uh, him and Adam hung out once and got really drunk and like left beers and alcohol outside of the porch, half drunk. Other than that, they had like I no. Love line? 
Yeah, well, but after a show. Other yeah. than that, they had like no yeah. connection. So they just kind of got along. He was a good engineer. He played drops. Anderson comes in and he's getting trained. And the first night of his show is Pennywise's return to Love Line. Pennywise returned, and the first time they were on, they uh, vomited on Dr. Drew. Uh, one guy, the Fletcher, he's like 6'5", I think he was like 320 or something, some crazy huge man. Drew would always uh, exaggerate and say he could palm your back, but picture a man with a hand large enough that Dr. Drew would say he could palm your back. That's how big wow. this man is. Wow. And so it's come out years later that Ricky Rackman, the co-host at the time, this predates Adam, this is 1994, this is the first time okay. he came on Love Line, okay. had prepped them and told them to come on and get drunk and mess with Drew and attack him. And this is Ricky's new story as of 2017. He's never revealed before. Before, it was just they got drunk, came on the show. Pennywise never said anybody told him to do it. Maybe Ricky's trying to grasp at some sort of extra connection to, like, events that happened. Who knows? So Maybe Pennywise, he did tell him to go wild. Who's Pennywise? Maybe I'm sorry. Mature. I got lost there. Oh, you like, didn't break up there. Oh, I, I just – who's Pennywise? I'm sorry. You're breaking up a little bit. Let's, let's, let's stop. Let's see what's going on. Is this oh. Zoom? Yeah. I don't know what's going on here. I'll just – shouldn't be anything. Can you hear me now? Oh, you're fine. Yeah, it was, it was breaking up. Uh, if, if we mark this time-wise, you can cut it out so it's not so choppy. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so Pennywise, come on in 94. Uh, yeah. Get drunk, eat pizza, the whole show. Oh, now you're but, I, but I don't know who Pennywise is. Oh, Pennywise is a band. They're a punk band uh, out oh. of California. Okay, uh, sorry. Couple... That's where you kind of lost me. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's not the clown. They yeah, that's... Your, a, that's audio's a... still... Your audio's break up a bit. I think, we're... I think the videos uh, mess us up. You want to go audio only? Yeah, we'll do audio only uh it'll save us some bandwidth yeah usually this doesn't happen although i do like looking at you in your background you have the coolest predator pop i've ever seen yeah i've got a great great little that's conan o'brien yeah that's conan as a as a predator um stop video okay so there conan o'brien is a different kind of predator (laughs) i love conan has has he ever been accused of something like that no not at all Okay. The opposite. Right. Yeah. Adam actually hates him because uh, Lisa Cushel, uh, I think it was her name at the time, she's uh, got married and changed. She's a famous uh, actor. She was on Dr. Katz, a couple other things. I think she has okay. a bunch of her roles she's done. She's famous for being having a very large chest and being very desired by all the men in the LA comedy community. Oh. And uh, she was in a Conan, and uh, he basically said, No, I'm too sad about my last breakup. I don't want to be with you. And everybody's <laughs> like, What? And it's like all these guys with the L.A. comedy community from the early 90s are mad at him because the one they all had a crush on, he was like, no, thanks. Well, that's a that's a really dumb reason. But I mean, well, then also Adam was on Conan twice. And there's a whole thing where he got banned, soft banned from the show because the second booking, he called the audience a bunch of lesbians because they didn't react well to one of his jokes. Oh. And then Conan did his classic push away from the desk move as opposed to like yeah. supporting him. And it does not play well as Adam's biggest fan. It is a moment where like, ew, no wonder he didn't want him back. But then they try to lie and say they didn't book teams uh, when Jimmy was supposed to be on uh, after Mm -hmm. 9-11 and there were only people in uh, New York. And he's like, well, actually, that worked. But I was on Conan once before with Dr. Drew before I was on Solo. So if you just didn't like my last appearance, you don't want to tell me. Yeah. Um, I think Adam has kind of – the celebrity world has kind of distanced themselves from – Oh yeah, Adam. I mean, I mean, the, oh. it's, it's so it's all by it's inadvertent to a series of events like his tweeting and stuff. It's like it's so late in the game where he should have been tweeting like the way he is now or was two years ago back in 2010 when James Gunn, Chris Hardwick, all these other guys were. See, yeah. back then you could have these crazy outlandish tweets, whether they're yeah. serious or jokes, and they weren't going to do anything. But yeah. then once you get like into it at this stage, he stepped in. He like he's on stage one of being on Twitter, and everybody else is on stage twelve. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's not even like a it's not even a it's, it's more of just like, oh, you're like, it's it's it's, pathetic, it's shock but not in a mean and, way. Yeah, it's but just kind it, of it's kind just of him just trying to get attention. Yet. It's not it's not even that. It's more of like he's like tweeting when he's angry or tweeting. At yeah. Night when he's oh, yeah. Support, or he's angry a lot. And not explain the context. It, it's uh, it doesn't help. And he knows yeah. it doesn't help. And he talks about it online. And uh, it's it's all that's a whole other thing. It's, it's oh, man, I have so much. It's. It, I love the man so much, and uh, it's, it's, I wish I could help with so many more things. But back to Pennywise. They're on Love Line. Mm-hmm. Fletcher is apparently instructed to drink tequila and eat pizza, whatever. We only have a small clip of this. He shoves his hand down his throat and makes himself vomit all over Dr. Drew. At the time, Adam had just started doing stuff on the Kevin and Bean morning show on the same station. He built lockers for them to put their stuff. Okay. 
and for all the radio personnel. So Dr. True climbs up on these like foot lockers as Fletcher's vomiting on him and he starts punching him in the face. So Fletcher's vomiting on him, holding him against the wall and Dr. Drew's full on decking him. And the other band members have been band members with Fletcher for years. They're on their own band member. Eventually we go, I think blows brains out. So like these are hardcore dudes where one's going to blow his brains out with a shotgun after this for unrelated reasons. And they said Whoa. they couldn't believe that somebody would ever punch Fletcher, let alone Dr. Drew. They've never seen anybody fight back against him. And, and do we like, know what on. started the fight? Uh, nothing. He was, I guess Ricky had told them to have something crazy happen on the show, and Fletcher was just drinking tequila nonstop, eating pizza, and just... Jesus. <laughs> so wow. we, we don't know the whole origins of that. Anyways, after all these years banned, they're finally coming back to promote their second album. So they have Straight Ahead, and they have Full Circle. Straight Ahead is a second album. It's a masterpiece. It has a song, Alien. It was a big uh, hit on radio and has had a video that played on much music. It okay. also played on the box channels. It got no MTV play because they were a punk band. Yeah. Uh, really cool song. Great. They're coming on. It's going to be great. Anderson's first night. So uh, mm. Fletcher gets drunk again. This time he says he has a grenade. He's taking them all hostage. The police show up. It's madness. Uh, decades later, <laughs> or over a decade later, we got the video from Engineer Mike. The first engineer, or the the one that was there with uh, Trini yeah. Anderson. So online, you can watch the video of the police showing up, and uh, between commercials, Adam begging Fletcher to let them go. Fletcher saying, "No, he's going to take them to Poo Poo City this time, and he's going to blow them all with a grenade." Eventually, did he, he have a grenade? Went, no, but he was he was he was arrested. The SWAT team came. It was madness. And Adam's just sitting the whole time. He's like, he grabs one of their beers. He just starts drinking it. He's like, "Well, I'm leaving at midnight, no matter what. So I don't care what you say is going to happen." <laughs> <laughs> this is shock jock stuff i love it that's yeah they really adam's got more, their name adam's okay. like a boxer so he, he wasn't like he wasn't bragging like he would have just punched him and knocked him unconscious adam carolla was a boxer oh yeah he trained boxing yeah he's, oh, a, he's an expert boxer he's, wow. he's got perfect timing and, and it, uh it was great there's a great story where uh, denzel washington uh mm -hmm. training for um hurricane uh, he mm -hmm. has a they have the same boxing training okay terry and Terry uh, loves Adam because Adam has unreal balance. Like one mm -hmm. day, Terry's like, how can you balance like that? He's like a black man in his 30s or 40s, younger than Adam. Uh, and he goes, let me try something. He goes, stand on this medicine ball. So he starts like having Adam standing on smaller and smaller, more difficult balls to stand on while he's throwing balls at him. Like stand on this yoga ball, I'm going to throw a medicine ball. You see if you can catch it. And they just keep seeing what you can do. And so one day, uh, Denzel's like, come on, Terry, tell me. Who, out of all the actors, who's the best? Who's the best boxer? He's like, Adam Carolla, straight up. Better than wow. he's like not even just for an actor. He's like just the best boxer. He's great. Would never have that idea. I would never yeah, have had about. an idea. His wow. hands are destroyed from holding focus pads. He has uh, sores and wounds yeah. all over. Drew's drained them live on air with Anderson watching, uh, only to infect them and make them worse. He has all kinds of problems from it. Wow. Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That, it, part, partly how he kind of got in the industry, but not really. He was. It was. It's kind of just part of the whole thing. He, he was. Uh, he was going to train Jimmy Kimmel to fight the maintenance man on the morning show. And he actually wanted to train the maintenance man because he thought he'd have a better odds. He'd been on the station longer. And he got saddled with Kimmel. That led to them becoming friends and everything else. And Love wow. Line's completely separate than that. But, but anyway, so uh, Anderson's first night on Love Line, the worst it could possibly be. Trial by fire. I mean, almost literally cops are their guns on their hip. And it's crazy. Uh, the Fletcher smashed his own security guard who was supposed to help him into the door and all, like, try, try to break his head open. It's all on video. You can watch all this. It's crazy. Wow. So, and uh, do you think it was... And I, I don't know how much of this Anderson would care about, but he's pretty open about his drug use. Was he kind? Was he d doing drugs at this stage? And a lot he was of probably this... on his best behavior that night, but of course he was. Yeah, this is yeah. the area. This is when he was like sleeping on people's couches. Yeah, trying to crash at the stage. So he probably was like, "Wow, this place is for me." <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, these guys are not a party. Yeah, exactly. I can handle this, uh, this kind of vibe. So yeah. that's interesting. Oh, but Mike, the... you didn't say you guys were cool. Yeah, yeah. So Mike trained him and then Mike left to go work as uh, uh, Game to, Show Network. And game Show Price Network. Is right. Yeah, basically, they're like, he was also working with Tom Likas at the time, who was a local broadcaster. His whole thing was don't spend mm -hmm. more than 40 bucks on a date. He's a Zofdig, short man, <laughs> uh, very unattractive, you know, red faced all the time. Part of why he's so angry at women, I assume. And his whole thing was just about dump that bitch. And he was very oh, popular. In yeah, I, I, Los Angeles, I've, I've heard that. Los Angeles and Seattle play on drive time all the time. It was a great indicator if you were in somebody's car who's a bad person. Mm. So, and then Anderson has a blissful two years. Yep, and then before... the roughly right around this is when Brian comes in. So Brian gets yeah. hired at uh, K-Rock, the mother station, to do uh -huh. screen calls. He really wanted to be on Loveline. I think it took less than a year, roughly. So I think he came on there about 2001. 
And then mm-hmm. by 2002, we have the exact dates. We're going to fill this out. Yeah. Uh, Brian was on Love Line. Yeah. And okay. Love Line wasn't recorded. The mother station was recorded uh, about t- 10 minutes away. At this place called Westwood One. There's a whole contract rights issue. That's another thing that comes into play. But so he finally got to leave the downtown building and go to this little crappy ski chalet, as they called it, and screen <laughs> phone calls in the same room as Anderson yeah. uh, across from Adam and Drew. And, okay, so he was screening calls there, and Anderson was the mixer, producer, board. The engineer, yeah. Engineer. engineer. Okay. So then it's going well. February 2003 is when there is when the real beat starts. Yeah, so what and, happened is, I guess it was about a year of Brian, you know, uh, excited puppy, mm-hmm. and Anderson, the mean, angry dog. Yeah, yeah, shut up. <laughs> uh at the, having this weird relationship at love line anderson like a, a drugged out thug you know living on the streets uh brian this sweet boy who doesn't understand how the world works trying to do his king of the hill impression for pamela adlon who's being kind even though it's midnight and she doesn't want to hear his king of the hill impression. <laughs> uh anyway so he finally convinces anderson let's do a show together because brian has always been more eager he definitely wants to be on air talent it's just a thing he's had yeah anderson i think he always did he's two- good at it yeah, you look at Ulthar. But I think yeah. Anderson has the same thing he has with his filmmaking, where he self sabotages and he won't believe himself. Where, like, he's writing a screenplay at Loveline, and the dude from It's Always Sunny is like, You write screenplays, Anderson? Let me take a look. And Anderson's like, No, 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 it's not for you. <laughs> but, like, he really, in reality, he probably would have liked to show it to him. And that's what he says nowadays, says he should have, and he would self sabotage. So, whatever Brian's able to strike, whatever chord, he's able to convince Anderson, Let's record a show. February 2003, they sit down in a the studio, they make real beat, they record it to a CD. <laughs> uh, which still exists and still plays. And they, so, they played this recording in the f- Patreon feed, I believe. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. And so essentially, this month right now is 20 years? 20 years of no. the Film Vault. Yeah, this month is 20 years of the Film Vault. Mm-hmm. It wasn't called that in the first recording, but it's them talking about movies. It's the same show. It's, tw- it's, it's the, the same. Exactly. Wow. Here, they well, still talk I'm, about real beat to this day. What a dumb title this! That is, uh, I'm gonna put that in the description. Um, mm-hmm. This month is Film Vault Month. Oh, that's and so they exciting. actually wrote February 2003 on the disc too, so it's not even a thing where you can go, eh, maybe it's 2004. No, no, you guys wrote that on the yeah. disc. Yeah, I wish we knew. I wish we knew the exact day. <laughs> I, we could actually probably figure that out. Yeah, based on what they say in the recording, it'll reveal who the guest on Love Line was. It'll reveal what day it is. And you, so. Do you have these CDs and these recordings? Uh, Real Beat Anderson transferred, posted the picture. I have the recording. It's on Patreon. Yeah, I, have, mm. I, I archive everything. Okay, cool. Um, so February 2003. So they're doing this. This is a separate show, but at the Loveline studio. There's, yeah, te- they're doing like a test pilot. Like, can, do we have chemistry? Can this be a thing? Yeah. And, and then they don't do anything else with it. And this is the orange couch, right? No, no, this is just Loveline at Westwood One. This is before Kroll even has a podcast. This is like a podcast didn't even really exist yet. So RSS yeah. technology was added to, uh, was podcasting was essentially added to RSS technology, like to add an MP3 enclosure. Mm-hmm. And that's why Adam Curry gets credit for inventing podcasting. He didn't invent RSS. He just told the guy that did it, he goes, hey, what if you put a thing in there so I can put like an MP3 <laughs> file? And meanwhile, all of us Loveline fans were already exchanging MP3s across the internet. It was actually the first thing that was exchanged on Napster. Yeah. It was music and Loveline. Not Howard Stern, not any other show, Loveline. Wow. And all the early podcasts used the exact same encoding standards of Loveline that fans used. And they weren't the lowest settings. They were specific settings. Mm-hmm. 64, 44. I hate it. I hate those guys. <laughs> and so all these podcasts that started, they started using these settings. So everybody knows where it actually came from. But the RSS feed part, the part where it automatically shows up on your computer and then your device, that's Adam Curry telling a guy who actually invented something, hey, why don't we put that there? That somebody eventually in the community would have had added anyway. But, yeah. you know, people who don't actually do anything like the Billy Mitchells of the world have to stick to something <laughs> they did that they didn't actually do. Um, I would have to look up who Billy Mitchell is. Uh, uh, King of Kong. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, All the right. big faker. Yeah. The big f- he's getting oh, busted yes, all the time yes, now. Yes. He's in the news. They're they're, yeah. they're busting him in everything. They, they've caught him in every lie. And and we love the documentary so much. And now it's like, do we should I even go back and watch it? Like, I don't know. Well, no, the, the, the hero's good. The bad guy, Billy Mitchell, the one that was they thought was a liar, that was a cheater, and they couldn't prove it. Oh, they've now okay. the history has now proven it because of the documentary. So nice. the documentary has made Steve even more of a hero. 
and made everybody else more pathetic, including my favorite guy, the guy that shows up in the brand new shirt. I'm so that guy. He didn't wash <laughs> it or iron it or wear it first. And it, they go, is that new shirt? He's like, no, no, it's not. But it's, you can see the, it just came out of the packaging, dude. You can see I think the, it's those needles in it. Yeah. <laughs> the people are pulling out the, the yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, uh, yeah the, so essentially that's how podcasting started. And then like 2004, podcasts were starting to become a thing because there's uh, uh, iPods and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was actually podcasts for Battlestar Galactica, the show. They would record podcasts instead of commentaries. And mm -hmm. then on when the DVD set came out, they put them all on the DVD sets. And that was the first place I actually saw the word podcast. I'm like, what the? I want commentaries. What are these podcasts? I don't want like some like, mini-sode thing where you record five minutes. I want you to watch the whole episode. And that's exactly what it was. But they were calling them podcasts because they were trying to use this new format. It was very upsetting to be at the time. But anyway, so we'll go ahead. They don't do anything real beat. And then we're in 2005. Brian's fired from Loveline over some bullshit. He okay. had a blog he was doing on the Loveline Companion Forum. A mixture of <laughs> hardcore fans were normal. A lot of crazy people. People asking for really weird stuff all the time. And like having fits, going crazy on Adam and Drew. Basically a, a place that Adam and Drew tried to be a part of. But because it was so unpoliced and unmoderated, they had to leave very shortly after. And it became kind of just like a... A crazy place so the blog is what got him fired because it was just a, a shit show it was just an honest there? blog i can give you the, the entry it's nothing it was like mm -hmm. uh, adam and drew said we we're getting too many of these kind of calls asked for these other kind somebody huh. saw that told drew's wife got back to drew and then somehow brian got fired it got blamed on drew we're still not sure if drew wanted him fired or did anything or even knows what actually happened but so, drew was used as a cudgel or a cudgel to fire brian but who was in power to because wasn't Adam in power of Loveline and be well, Adam and Drew the... technically were the hosts, but nobody respected them. So that's the whole thing is Anderson like, You're not my boss, dude. You don't pay my checks. Even though now right. Anderson says, you know, he actually was my boss. I should have been more respectful. But so the, and, and Anderson Adam just didn't care. He just leave. And then uh, but Drew has other people around him who do care. Sometimes his agents, sometimes other people, and they do step in. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. Okay. So Brian was fired or something he didn't do. There was nothing wrong with what he did saying that they didn't want these kind of calls. He wasn't being harsh or shitty or anything uh adam note note takes note that brian was fired it was shitty adam's also being screwed over at this time it's uh, 2005 instead of uh, getting the same contract offer they've been getting the entire time because before adam started loveline was not syndicated drew okay. did it for free for years since 1983 yeah. the year i was born he wasn't actually even paid i think until 93 when poor man the host of the time tried to do a stunt where he went to kevin or bean's house in the middle of the night with a bunch of audience members which resulted <laughs> in him being fired and their guest of that night, Ricky Rackman, producer Ann of Loveline, said, can you just stick around and be the host now? And he became a co-host. Wow. And that's right That's right around when they started doing it. Uh, the 93, they started doing five nights a week. <clears throat> Drew started getting a check. It wasn't much of a public service anymore, but it was a small check. So that and was when Adam came on. Adam came on, they syndicated, and they instantly started getting million-dollar paychecks. Wow. Favor wow. Nations. It was 999, 95,000 or something. And they got the exact same amount every single year because of Adam. And Adam never asked for more. The final year, mm -hmm. they go, Adam, you're going to get 200 grand. Drew, you get 995. Turns out they wanted Adam to go. The last two years, he was dominating the show in 04 and 05. Mm -hmm. But 05 hadn't happened yet. This was the beginning of 05. So they were just hedging their bets. And they, they did admit they wanted a younger Hispanic male to take over the show who was hilarious and would bring them a whole new audience, mm -hmm. which they never actually found. No. I mean... They, 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 Mike Catherwood was close, I guess, technically, but it, it wasn't what they were looking for. And there was a, another couple of white guys in between yeah. they had a bunch of guest hosts. Uh, Burt Kreischer came on there, told the machine story for the first time, uh, it led to him telling it on stage. Uh, it was, it was the whole thing. But so uh, Adam was screwed over that year. He's leaving Loveline. It's his last year because he tells Drew, hey, don't sign the contract. Don't sign the contract. We'll, we'll go on this together. We'll make him fix it. Drew's wife, uh, you know, agent, everybody pressures him. He signs it. Adam and Drew have since mended fences. Adam doesn't hold grudges. He understands Drew's nature. Drew mm -hmm. accepts him saying this out loud. Yeah. Uh, and then so uh, Adam left, and he got two TV shows. One was the Adam Carolla Project. It was a construction show where he's going to remodel his dad's old house for his dad, who can then sell it and get all the money. And then the other one was uh, Too Late with Adam Carolla. Uh, okay. I think this was right around either – it's right before uh, the Colbert show, the Colbert yeah. War. Or it's right uh, before, and it became after his show. I can't remember the exact timing. He might predate the Colbert Report. I think he was in that time slot. And when his show was canceled, then Colbert started, I think. Or he was following Colbert. But he was right after the Daily Show. He was right in that time slot on the Comedy Central. Oh, well, that's a good it was basically slot. A, yeah, it was 2005, the fall. Interview format, 20-plus minutes. Funny little bits. Adam talks to 1780s guy. It's basically mm -hmm. him and Ben Franklin walking down the street. And it goes, 
Adam explained something crazy. And then sometimes, uh, sometimes they go, what do you mean? They, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then Adam would just sit there and he'd, he'd like hunch his shoulder and goes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and it's just like some modern thing that doesn't make sense to anybody. And there's a funny little bit. And then there's be an interview with a celebrity for most of the episode. Brian ended up working there because Adam was like, you know, it was shitty how you got fired. I like your moxie. And it was funny. Uh, in the tapes that Anderson eventually gave me that when he got, when the love line shut down, we're skipping ahead, of course, there was a yeah. floppy diskette. Oh, black, wow. Unlabeled on this floppy disk, which I had to buy a USB floppy drive. to. Open. Yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> Bald Brian's 2005 resume. <laughs> he just left it at the studio. That's so he amazing. Fired, he wrote his resume that night and just left it. <laughs> so all the, all while this is happening, Brian being fired and then being taken on by Adam Carolla on the Too Late Show, Real Beat is still happening. No, right? it hasn't. It, only only the one episode. They taped the one episode and then nothing. Oh, so then it's there was one episode in two thousand three, and then nothing happened for a few years. Nothing at all. And oh, so okay. uh, then two thousand six happens. Adam's uh, too late ends. They got one run. They didn't do another order. Uh, the Adam Kroll project w- could have got another season, but the w- uh, the executive's wife didn't like something about the show, so mm-hmm. they buried it and didn't promote it. I guess that was the the rumor uh, why the show didn't because it was a huge hit. Everybody loved too late. The too late People show. It's called. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I can be with Kuzu. Too late. The Comedy Central one. That's the one yeah. Brian worked on. The Adam so Carolla yeah. project is the one that uh, yeah. the wife he was gonna, uh, yeah. his wife hated, and that's the one that gets the crazy good reviews and people still talk about. Really, it's considered like one of the best home improvement shows ever done. I have heard of it, but in the zeitgeist, at some point, I mean, I was 16 at this time, so yep. And yeah. also, it's, it's a U.S. thing, but it was on TLC, and then in 2006, we, yeah, my mom was obsessed with TLC, so most I moms watched are a lot yeah. of stuff, yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a buddy who had a living girlfriend at this time. So this was a, it was a couple of years later, actually. It was a couple of years prior to this. And uh, she didn't want him watching any TV. He was still a teenager back then. And so she put a towel over his TV with like heavy candles and stuff on top of it. And then she would unfurl the towel and turn on only the channels he was allowed to watch, which were TLC. And she also put, used the V-chip to block them, but she didn't trust it. So there was like Gosh. a year where my buddy only watched TLC and Animal Planet. And so like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I mean... Buddy, they're fun to watch, like, you know, in short bursts, but oh, I Oh, sure, would... but not as your only content, like a prisoner, exactly. because you have a, a weird teenage girlfriend who's underage living with you, even though you're a teenager and your mom's cool with it, and I'm not cool with it as your friend. <laughs> so that, that, that was what happened. So 2006, uh, Brian is hired as the phone screener. So this is kind of a back, you know, this is kind of a demotion almost back to, instead of being, you know, somebody who's helping on the production of a TV show, he's now screening calls again on Adam Carolla's brand new morning show that they've been working towards on klsx a, a competing station at k-rock he's taking over for howard stern in the mornings who's gone to sirius yeah across the u.s they put david lee roth on the east coast who lasted mm. a few weeks and burned yeah. out uh, man cow who was already doing a radio show in chicago and uh he just never caught on i think he's like a crazy religious guy now uh so kind of like a mini alex jones type i guess but not as yeah. bad and then there was Adam on the West Coast, and Adam had like 14 markets. He was number one in like Seattle and Vegas, which he would say the dumbest city and the, the smartest city. Was so Adam was doing good. this and Too Late, or was that done? Uh, too Late wrapped up. So Too Late okay. was fall, and it was okay. over by December, and Brian okay. was fired. Okay. Uh, Adam Cole Project was fall. It was over. And then they did like test shows all December, and they started in January, and he was just doing the morning show. Okay. Okay. And so the morning show's going good. Brian's uh, you know, doing calls. I didn't call in, so I don't know. I was listening to the show. I remember a uh, huge you know, he was love line fan possible. I'm at some weird uh, place I don't want to be with people I want to be. And then it's like the middle of the night. I'm like, I'm leaving. I don't want to be here anymore. It gets weird. And so I'm driving home in my uh, Nissan 240SX with the timing chain about to snap. My job outsourced, uh, no unemployment, no money. Driving home from the mountains because I gave somebody a ride home unsure if my timing chain is going to snap in the middle of nowhere where I could actually be mauled by wildlife. Like on this side, of the <laughs> like oh. next to I-90 and uh, it's right as the morning show is starting and it comes on, it's not even fully light out yet. And I hear Dave Damashek, who's like this very Pittsburgh voice. He's not Adam Carolla. And I never once in my mind thought that anybody else would be on the show besides Adam. Mm. And of course there's a news girl and there's Dave and none of these voices are Drew. And no. I wanted Anderson to carry over and be the engineer for the show, but that was never going to happen. And we found out years later, uh, Jimmy Kimmel ordered uh, Anderson cannot come over to the show because Adam hates him so much. And this was like a running thing where everyone on yeah. Adam's behalf would say, Anderson needs to stay away because Adam can't stand the guy. Meanwhile, they had like three or four interactions on air that were uh, not even hostile, just like 
just Anderson just push the button. Like that's yeah. the worst it got. I've heard the, them talk a lot about it. Yeah, um, that's the that's the yeah. worst it got. Like it's not yeah. even like I'll fire you. I hate you. It was like just push the buttons. Meanwhile, yeah. Stryker, the guy that got the job after Adam, oh yeah, because Anderson was playing drops of you're a lesbian, you're a lesbian, Doctor Drew. While they were talking to Lindsay Lohan, who was living with Samantha Ronson at the time, he ran in the back room, started punching Anderson and smashing his board. And he kept the job after that. That wasn't even an issue because nobody cares it's about it. It's funny and and shocking. No, that wasn't even a bit. He, that wasn't a bit. He didn't want Anderson to ruin his connection to Lindsay Lohan because he was using right. her as like a proxy celebrity thing, the narcissistic glow, trying to work your way into different like communities. That's what he does as a person. It's sociopathic, but I'm not really even judging it because a lot of people in the industry do that. But he was mad because Anderson might be jeopardizing Lindsay Lohan, his meal ticket, unaware that yeah. Lindsay Lohan was uh, <laughs> nosediving her own career. That wouldn't oh, matter yeah. anyway. We, we, we care we if know. you offend her. You say <laughs> saying she's a lesbian, the thing that she actually is. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. But yeah. so there's no actual thing. But everyone does this stupid myth of Anderson, the bad guy. Meanwhile, at worst, Anderson was the uh, angry punk teenage uh, son of Loveline that Adam and Drew inherited. Like, it's like they had a marriage. Now they have this son around who's kind of a dick, but kind of Anderson funny. was the rebel. And also Adam stood up for Anderson. Every time he was told he couldn't yeah. get drops anymore, uh, Adam would tell him he can and got him his drops ability back. One time Anderson actually sounds like he's going to cry. He's like cry voice. And Adam's like, don't worry about it, Anderson. We'll get your drops back. You'll be playing him again, blah, blah, blah. And then Anderson's like, thanks guys. I really appreciate you supporting me. So this is now, now I have a question that I should have asked earlier. I'm getting used to interviewing people, so excuse me. But so back at, uh, Brian is fired from Loveline, Mm -hmm. uh, the Too Late Show. Brian is hired. What was Anderson doing during all of this? Still at Loveline. So Anderson's a company man like myself. I've had the same job 20 years. Anderson stayed with Loveline until 2016 when the show ended. Gotcha. Thank you. I was just kind of trying to place that. And in throughout my head. 2006, he was the de facto co host of Loveline. It's not called oh. that, but us hardcore fans know. It's yeah. basically the Drew and Anderson year with Anderson okay. in a different room. It's one of the coolest dynamics of Loveline that exists with like the cool celebrity guests coming in to try out Daniel Tosh. Anderson brought Daniel Tosh mm. in for three shows. Love him. And he's trying out to be the host. And the executives were like, nah, he's just not good enough. Oh, losers. He's amazing. He's he brought so... in It's Always Sunny guys. He, 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 Anderson yeah. is great. Yeah, Anderson is great. And uh, so he's doing that. And then Brian okay. is the Brian's a phone screener on the morning show. And yeah. Mike Lynch, who is a, a writer who Adam knows from working at Jimmy Kimmel Live, who he, he was like, I like you. You're a smart kid. Come with me. I'm, you know, I, I, I like how you work. And so he'd always be assigned to Adam to type stuff for him, basically, much like uh, Adam De La Pena was at the man show, the guy that did I'm with Busey and uh, – minority team and much other things and uh, code monkeys uh so mike lynch okay. was basically the guy at when, when jimmy kimmel started his, his uh, night show uh, late night show he brought adam over as a writer and adam just would hang out and like show up in the daytime have fun and still do love line and he'd been doing that for a couple of years and then he bailed out because they didn't need him anymore and he took mike lynch with him to the morning show and mike lynch was the drop sound effects guy basically he was the engineer anderson of the show he was good okay. he was fine but, but he's going to want a honeymoon so he's like, like i got a honeymoon there. i gotta go waste man it's like all right well we'll have brian fill in on your job while you're on your honeymoon Oh, Brian yeah. had all there. the years of Anderson. Brian came in like a machine. Everyone lost their shit uncontrollably every episode that week to the point where Mike Lynch came back like, sorry, dude, Brian's got your job now. You're still right. Wow. Pay more money, whatever. But Brian's the drops guy now. Wow. Mm-hmm. Everybody loved him. He's cool as shit. They go like do live shows at the Playboy Mansion. He dress up in his football player outfit and stuff. He was like cool pictures of him. Teresa Strasser became the full-time news girl. She was the second one. The first one flamed out. It was Rachel Perry, your own Rachel Perry from Canada for much music. So remember, her? do you remember Rachel Perry? I th- uh, if you give me a second, much to music look. DJ. If I see a picture of her, which I'm looking up right now, she I moved to VH1, and then she was the first uh, news girl on the yes. show. Yes, yes, I had a crush on her. I mm-hmm. just didn't know who she was. She's Canadian. She flamed out. She flamed out and left the yeah. show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still asleep while she was broadcasting from New York's Fashion Week on air. Hey, you guys have a president that falls asleep, so. Uh, I'm fine with that, but I, she was supposed <laughs> to be on a boarding show. Uh, I, fall I know. Too. Uh, um, yeah, so, uh, sorry. So, Brian, 2006, Brian is hired at the KLCX Ace. ACS phone. ACS, yeah, it's a lot of letters. Yeah, it's a lot of letters. Uh, and then so Brian takes over the sound effects draw- guy. 
where's Anderson in this? Why is he not the sound effects guy? Because he's the sound effects guy over at Loveline. Love he was banned and, from ever doing anything using... further with Adam and radio because Jimmy okay. Kimmel made it an edict because Jimmy Kimmel was under the impression that Adam hated him when he didn't. And Jimmy didn't hate him either. Jimmy liked him. So it was just this thing. Like yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you can't have Anderson. There's like, well, who told you that? Who, who so, did this? Loveline. Um, sorry. <laughs> Loveline. At this point, Corolla was gone then. Yep. So Anderson was allowed to be a part of that and do the drops and stuff. And then well, he, Adam would have let him be a part of it. He was, he was just, there's no Adam. So there's more air to fill even more than there was. So it was basically, it was the same show like when Adam was there minus Adam. It was yeah. kind of like the episodes when Adam didn't show up, which are very few. But they were so the sound effects time. and drops that Brian is using are from uh, Anderson's board. Like, he or, took a bunch from, yeah. Okay. I thought but that, maybe... but that mostly is not, he's mostly doing new stuff. Uh, yeah. There were so many great drops. A lot of them are lost to time. Okay. Uh, in 2007, they had a cast change, which is a thing that happens a lot on the show. Mm-hmm. And Dave Damashek, the sports guy, was gone. They brought in Danny Bonaducci, who was going to host a competing oh, yeah, morning show. Okay. Instead of letting him host the show, they uh, they told Adam he had no choice to bring him in. He kind of ruined 2007. He talked a lot. His voice is bad. There's lots of noise. Mm-hmm. Brian became an superstar because he would mock Danny on air with Danny's own drops. And it was so brutal. It was the funniest shit you've ever heard in your entire life. Like, you can't believe how mean Brian is. Like, to the point, I, like, I thought Danny wanted to hit Brian. And then at the end of the year, when Adam did a sick out to get rid of Danny Bonaducci, he just didn't come to work for a week, including making Brian host a show with Dana Gould and Teresa and Danny at a live event where Adam wasn't at his own show for the end of the year. Uh, and he wouldn't tell anybody what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, Danny Bonaducci hired some uh, intern or somebody at the station who hated them, and they deleted all of Brian's drops. Wow. Wow. I was so sad by this. I was living in Hawaii at the time. I was miserable. I didn't have a job. I moved to Hawaii to get my job back. They wouldn't let me work there because it was a Howley, which means foreigner, but they only use it for white people. Totally wow. illegal, but nobody cares. Living off credit cards, got nothing, sleeping on the floor. Wait, uh, you're a foreigner? I, I, I got to end the interview. <laughs> oh, when I was in Hawaii. Yeah, when, when, you, when you go from, when you go from uh, a, one state to Hawaii, they use the term Howley if you have white skin. It's supposed to mean foreigner, like uh, you're a hmm. foreigner to Hawaii. But it's really just a, a way to say something kind of shitty about Hawaii. I would love to live in Hawaii. Oh, my God. I thought I would, too. Uh, if you're poor, it's brutal. I mean, you want, like, <laughs> well, at I the time, poor. in 2007, in 07, yeah. if you wanted a gallon of organic milk, it was $22. What? Yeah, it was cheaper to drink gas. And if you want regular milk, 12 13 Holy shit. That's yeah, so like, it, was, it was pricey. That's like here if you went like way up north because they have to deliver that's exactly oh. why that's a lot oh. of the reason yeah so some of the stuff they just don't have there that they have to bring over on ships and that's why it's gonna be that way it's it sucks it's it sucked for me so I, I was an experience with uh that kind of level of racism and uh not having any agency like i was chased out of the great clips uh that said locals only i was living there for over a year but they didn't want me there it was just it was a bad experience i, I wasn't happy so I was, wow. I was living there at the time, and I was, I was miserable. And I was like, you know what I could do? I could, I had this shitty HP laptop. I'll go back through every single episode because they were making a podcast of the morning show at the time. And they were releasing okay. it on iTunes. So I was getting 40,000 average downloads per day. So there was a lot of people listening online. And they wouldn't tell Adam or the crew this. they just say, you have this many streaming minutes. They wouldn't use the word podcast. It drove me nuts. It's like, yeah, the guys told me we'd stream for this many minutes today. I'm like, and were you podcast. seeing other podcasts at this time? Yeah, they're everywhere. So podcasts were, on iTunes yeah. were starting to blow up everywhere. So mostly they're independent. There was Jimmy Pardo's Never Not Funny, mm-hmm. which started after right around Adam's podcast. He always says he's first, but he had an independent podcast that technically, yeah, he was first, Jimmy Pardo was, but Adam had a radio show podcast. A lot of people do this discrepancy where they go, well, that's a radio show. This is real. It's like, what about the BBC? What about uh, NPR? And then yeah. they go, oh. Yeah. So This American Life's not a podcast? And they go, oh. Even it's... Jimmy Pardo was doing that for years. I wrote to him once and he goes, Oh, and he came back on the Corolla show and he goes, no, this is actually how it happened. So they straightened out the record so they don't seem like assholes just trying to like toot their own horn. Because what Jimmy Pardo, Never Not Funny, did is uh, groundbreaking and legendary. Independent wow. podcast charging for a full show. John Hamm on every season. Uh, really? Like 26 seasons deep now. It's, it's a big deal. Wow. But, uh, so this time, uh, Corolla has a podcast. A bunch of the radio shows have podcasts. There's a couple independent ones. There's probably like Keith and the Girls starting up right around now or maybe it hasn't quite started yet. Oh, uh, yeah, dude's about to start up. A bunch of these type of shows. But Corolla's podcast is just a radio show thing. So it's, it's not even in the news media. It's not the big podcast boom of 09 yet. Yeah. And so yeah. Brian's crushing it. And all his drops get deleted. I'm so <clears throat> bummed out. I go back. I find every single one of his drops. I cut it to the exact same length. I use the actual wow. drops when he plays them. I send them all to him. 
He doesn't know how to load them into the board. You can do that. The replay 360, and he doesn't want to. He just wants to move on. So he just he thanks me, and he doesn't use any of them. Oh, no. But you but, have well, them still? I have them all. He has them all, too. Oh. And so he just – Brian doesn't like doing extra work. It's a, it's a thing. Yeah. It's just a thing we love about Brian. <laughs> <And> then, uh, <laughs> no. so, uh, so this time, I guess, behind the scenes, Brian is talking about bringing back real beat. Uh, nobody knows this. Yeah. So uh, it must be do- happening in 2007 or early 08. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about bringing it back. So in 2008, <clears throat> the Film Vault premieres on Free 2 HD, which is a new offshoot HD radio station from KLSX. Okay. Desperate for content. HD yeah. radio was like their, their answer to satellite radio. Okay. I'm not, I'm not too sure on the technology. I think I knew at the time. It was like digital satellite radio, but it's not satellite. It's, from, it's a digital signal from the same radio towers you get the regular thing. But, but it was it super clear. Was so, it on line like you could listen to it online you could listen to like, it online and, and you also had to have it. an hd radio in your car which they were starting to install oh, it was kind of okay. like the hd dvd versus blu-ray you know like serious for like it wasn't, it wasn't going to take off but yeah. people were doing and then now they still have hd radios in most cars you have an hd antenna but hmm. i don't know which which states have hd stations or which ones are uh, traditional uh fmam but anyway so they, they needed content but they didn't have 24 hours of content so it would drift by 10 15 minutes every week whatever their programming was hmm because they didn't have 24 hours a day so we keep shifting so like shows would start airing at like 8 13 like what what do you that's not right what, what's happening uh and so so the film all continues to air on free 2 hd brian's not promoting this at all like nobody has any idea is happening <laughs> so <laughs> well, it would air like between for me it was great. 3 and 5 a.m hawaii time so for los angeles oh, it was wow. like 8 or 9 a.m hawaii changes between uh, i think it's four and five hours depending on the time change in the states comparatively so Hawaii time is always the same, but then comparatively, if the states change because of daylight savings, then it's a four or five hour difference depending on which zone you're talking about. Yeah. And, and so you just continued to follow these guys because they were your friends or you just really loved what they no, were I, doing? No, I liked them from the show. So I, Brian, yeah. I was a huge fan of, uh, I didn't even really know him as a phone screener. He's here to mention yeah. in a while. I, I fell in love with him on the morning show. He's a great dude. And it, Brian put me in his top eight on MySpace in 2006. That was a big deal. I'm the Holy only fan in Brian's shit. top eight guys. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Brian's Does he sweetheart. know that? Oh, he did that. Yeah, because he, he loved I'd, I'd go, Brian, today, right this time, this time code. My man, you, you crushed it. Oh, this is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. This Anderson would be proud. Like, I was, That's I was just amazing. listening. Just like, this, this was great, dude. And he my just responded space. to it, I guess. Oh, my God. Brian likes positive attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was, I was like, oh, Brian's a nice guy. And this time, I'd still never interact with Anderson. Had no idea anything about, you know, if I were would. I didn't want to. I never wanted to meet Adam or Drew or anything like that. Yeah. So 2008, the Film Vault is continuing to air on free 2 HD. Nobody mm-hmm. has any idea. On Corolla boards, which is an offshoot message board for Corolla, there was an official one for the radio station, but the moderators, uh, a couple of them were sleeping with the fan moderators and like traveling uh, throughout the country and kind of controversial. It made some of the other fan moderators upset, so they made a separate message board where they took pictures of this girl and then just would say horrible things about her. It was this private message board. Oh, wow. And they, they got they got leaked that they were doing this. So the radio station was like, oh, man, screw this. And they killed that. They bulleted it. So then that private message board, they opened up to the public. They left those secret forums. Everybody found them. And it was just basically it was a message board to dox and hate fans of the show and talk about how ugly and uh, R-worded they are. I was in yeah. there about how ugly I was. Even I wasn't even a person yet, but I eventually got put in there. And it is a whole bunch of people. There's mean people. Yeah. And so that, that – that's why they didn't have an official message board anymore because of that. The, then the unofficial one became the official one technically because all the fans would go there. So over there on cruel boards now known as dying for scale, the user known as four door discovers the stream of the film vault on free to HD and records the first podcast files pirated once. So he's stream recording. He records them. He posts them. He goes, oh, I found this. It's pretty good. And then I, I, I go, Oh my God, what is this? Like, I had no idea Brian was doing this. At this point oh. in 2008, I was calling into the morning show. So in 2008, January, I was so uh, miserable in Hawaii and stressed out. The podcast wasn't dependably posting as it was previously. It was yeah. really messing me up. I, and uh, I was like, well, you know, we got to fig- figure out what's going on with this. I'm going to call in the show. The only time I could call in is at 3 a.m. And they also blocked outside numbers. You can only call in from the local markets. <laughs> so I had to do a whole bunch of digging. I finally found the station number that I could call from outside the, the, uh, outside the state. Uh, I waited till 3 a.m., went to my street corner so my crazy neighbors wouldn't mess it up or anybody wouldn't do anything. Called them from my cell phone on a street corner at 3 a.m. to complain about the podcast. And that's when I first told Adam on air what a podcast was, that he had one, that it needed to be posted more dependably. I commented Brian on his great work. 
And then uh, I was, I, they, they, Adam dubbed me the most miserable man in Maui. I was in Honolulu. <laughs> and uh, then Teresa, the news girl, goes, Giovanni, are you a super fan? Which I'd never even heard the phrase. I, go, I guess so. I don't know. Sure, whatever. Oh. And she starts telling me super fan Giovanni. And then I start calling in, like, hey, you saw this guest on from Love Line, or you should do this, or what are you guys doing that? And like, so I was a regular character. I only called in 19 times over wow. 14 months. So I try to space out. They wanted me to call in more, but again, there's three or That's four people lot. who hate me. Yeah, they, they wanted me to call in way more than that. So they had a guy, prisoner David, who called him weekly. <laughs> uh, but he was in jail for statutory rape and the attempted ah, murder of his victim. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a good caller. I, I'm a much better dude than that guy. Yeah. That I guy did not get any message board hate. Barely. Not, you're barely a better, but yeah. you know, they did not like me, but they, they would have probably prisoner David. Yeah. But uh, so I'm calling the time and I have no idea this is happening. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, sh I have to start recording this too. Cause this Florida guy's not that interesting. He's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna keep doing it. So I start doing it. So I'm waking up every morning at 3 AM on Sundays to record this stupid show. And they were playing the same episodes over and over again, 20 weeks in a row with a, with a sound problem. So every other word, it cuts out. Like, Oh my this. God. So I'm, I'm syncopating the files, going back, removing the little spaces in between each one. Trying to fix wow. It. That's rough. Yeah, I'm wasting my life, dude. Do you have, do you have any like voice recordings or files of you calling in? Oh yeah. I have all of them. That's cool. Yeah. I have the official files and, uh, the, but that the was on love line. No, this is on the morning in. show. Oh, the morning, morning show. show. Sorry, Loveline is not Adam anymore. Yeah, I, I, I never called in Loveline. My friend tried to call in in 2004 with me on the line. We were going to tell uh, Adam about Family Guy coming back before it had been announced because at my job I found out because I helped out one of the producers. And Tara, don't call me Tara, God damn it. Uh, Brian's uh, opposition phone screener said that wasn't very interesting and hung up on me. Oh, my God, for me. Family Guy coming back was huge because yeah she didn't care she's just, she mean person she yeah, loved the Simpsons she liked animated shows she just didn't want me DVDs. to tell Adam that yeah so did I so that's the whole thing I talked yeah Mike Henry he's like he's like we're coming back I'm like what do you mean we're coming back he's like we're coming back he's like you can't tell anybody he's like if you tell anybody I'll know because nobody knows yet I was like what, what? it's like it's like it's like I was like oh that I was gonna tell Adam and then no, nobody ever knew but it was a sliding doors moment I never got to talk to Adam I didn't call him a love line until the very final episode in 2016 because Anderson wanted me to. And I was the very last caller on Love Line. How poetic. So that's a whole oh. other story. So I take that's over not, recording yeah. in 2008 because nobody else cared enough to continue doing it. So I'm now recording uh, the film vault for everybody. And uh, they're just, they just stopped posting. Uh, new, they're not uh, playing new episodes. Nobody cares. Nobody's monitoring this free two HD station. It's just running independently. It is crazy how uh, understaffed, uh, unequipped, and, ev and how sloppy everything in radio is. You can't believe what kind of an industry this is. It is shocking still to this day how bad it got. <laughs> So but these so are I, the episodes that uh, Anderson, technically, he always says nobody was listening to us. This was yes. the film vault, but we had no listeners. He says that quite yes. a bit. Because nobody advertised it. Nobody knew exactly. how to get it. And nobody cared. And Brian was on a morning show, and he was like too sheepish to go, and I have the film vault. So when I started calling and I found out the film vault, couldn't get the new episode, so I bring that up. Mike Chaffee, uh, the underling uh, intern guy at KLSX who works for the Corolla Show, He's now the head YouTube guy at Jimmy Kimmel Live for like 13 years. And he launched Adam Kroll's podcast, changed podcasting forever. Nobody has any idea. It was all Mike Chaffee and uh, me just helping him saying, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? But it was all Chaffee doing all the work and everybody else gets all the credit. And that wow. created a modern podcast comedy boom. It was literally all this one man's doing. And so I say, hey, why don't you post the film ball as a podcast? So they put up TFV 2008, March 9th uh, through – uh, 2009 218 February 18th and there's basically two episodes roughly every month for most of the year a couple months they skip and they're up there officially as podcast files in three segments per show because that's how Kalex uh, did everything Corolla show is 12 segments uh, so you have to drive down 12 files and can so I ask it, where Logan is in all of this doesn't exist yet as part doesn't of doesn't exist yet okay no nope, okay. not involved I was just curious so, if he was yep so TFV is going strong 2009 Corolla show's ending because the station's flipping formats. They're not doing any more talk. They're going to Jack format. They don't have to pay anybody. All okay. automated all the time. <laughs> Brian's diagnosed. That's Jack FM. Yeah. Uh, Brian's diagnosed. And, and funnily enough, Jack Silver was their station, uh, the, the head of the station. What the fuck's his name? I can't think of his name right now. I hate him so much. The head executive at KLSX who tortured Brian and uh, oh. Adam for years. Brian has an impression of Jack Silver, the program director. And he does it still this day. Hey, peeps, what's up? He was like this crazy perverted guy. He would wear the uh, beer keg uh, costume <laughs> to the Playboy Mansion. Uh, tap here, ladies. 
He literally kept a pair of binoculars in his office to stare at women exiting the gym across uh, the street. That shit bothers the fuck out of me. Oh, dude. Dude, you have no idea. Yeah. And he thought it was totally fine appropriate. And like he, they hated Adam and his staff. They refused to buy peanut butter. So Adam's agent, who's John Stewart's agent, had to call the station and go, baby, baby, what, what do you mean? What, what, what are you saying? It's like, well, uh, they won't buy any peanut butter. Well, how much are you asking for? Like a case? What do you, what do you, no, there's one jar of peanut butter for uh, the this, this staff. So we can have sand. What, what, I don't, I don't, I don't. And then he called Jack Silver. And what? Was to, like, he, and then Jack Silver was like, we can't afford this. And then <laughs> James Dixon called Adam back. He's like, he's like, a baby, baby. He's always his baby, everybody. He was, uh. On the state, uh, Thomas Lennon played a version of him. He was also the agent of all the guys in the state okay. in the 90s. And so he's a baby, baby. I don't, I don't like, he's just perplexed Adam's agent who just couldn't understand that they wouldn't pay for a jar of peanut butter. Uh, they hated Adam. They thought Adam ripped him off, that they were getting the man show, the radio show. They thought Jimmy Kimmel was going to be a daily host, even though he has a late night show. How's that even possible? He has a show that airs at 11 p.m. He records at like seven o'clock at night. And he's supposed to be back at six in the morning doing that when he's in this his yeah, morning, that's, late night show writing. Yeah. It makes sense. And he was a full-time producer on the show. He called in. He came in and hosted when Adam's kids were born, the two episodes Adam missed. He was there hosting. So, like, he was totally involved, but they had to pay him a million dollars, and they were very resentful about it. And I, I know uh, Jack Silver's personal <laughs> assistant, the guy that had to buff the binoculars. And to this day, he's still like, well, they did kind of rip us off. And it's like, <laughs> buddy, buddy, your <laughs> boss is a pervert. You're wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Even that guy's a really nice guy, and he's not on that side of thinking. It's just Did he's you, blinded to Adam's role in that. They still hate everyone. Still hates Adam. Have you thought about the K the, the KLSX guy's name yet? Oh, Jack Silver, the program director. I couldn't think of the title. I just want to say. The, oh, uh, okay. I, he's program director Jack Silver. Like I want Jack to, FL. I wanted to put throw him in the dirt. So, but I didn't realize that you had already said the name. Yeah, Brian doesn't pressure him. He does it all over the Adam Carolla show the past 10, 15 years. Okay. Uh, until he, it, it's a thing he does. He, we can get him to do it on the film vault, but people don't know who he's doing. It, it's, a, it's a perfect impression of the guy's voice. He's just kind of, a, you know, one of those guys who's like, did you blow your nose out on Coke in the 80s? You weren't ever really funny. You just wanted to work in radio, and you failed upwards, and that's him. Wow. So, so 2009, the, the show's yeah. ending, and Brian is diagnosed with cancer. And his future with TFV and on Earth is called into question. I love. I laughed so hard when I saw that. And I know it's it's because we know he's good that we can laugh now. But when Dude, I it's saw so that weird. you wrote, I never thought Brian was going to die. And it's not a thing of uh, oh, I do this all the time with people. I do positive yeah. thinking. If somebody tells me they're sick, I'm like, oh fuck, this person's going to die. Uh, <laughs> but I never thought it. It wasn't like oh, I love Brian so much, or he's special. I just yeah. knew this weird thing about him that he had his gallbladder removed. And he lost weight and got healthier and became like he be, he became like handsome and like yeah like he became a different dude and like yeah. the chick who rejected him in uh, college then rejected him was really interested in him became his wife you know because he's a different dude in different positions like not just because he's handsomer or whatever but yeah he just completely changed who he was because he had this surgery before that he was a secret shopper for Jack in the Box making himself sick eating his food every day and then he <laughs> has the surgery and it completely changed him he was like a balding over like I'll show you a picture of Brian two thousand three. He'd be like, he looks 50, and you look at Brian in 2008, it's like, oh my god, that's the same man? Yeah, he's he's obviously, he's an, older this is and no he offense, but he's a little too skinny now, and obviously that's from his uh, health issues, so I'm not saying... In person, a, though, if you see that, if you see him in a suit, even when he's real skinny, yeah. my god, man. I've, I've driven him a couple times where he comes down in a fancy suit, a little stubble. Nice. Like, yeah, Brian, are you a male model? What's going on here, buddy? <laughs> no, he's very handsome. I've seen a couple of pictures that where he looks a little chunky. Um, he just looked older. Know. It's just weird. He just doesn't look like himself. And after that, so I just I never thought he's gonna die. I'm just like I'm. I don't. I don't. I don't. don't I'm just like I don't. Whatever. Like, I wasn't even like phased by it. And like, yeah. In hindsight, it's a uh, it's shout. It's cold and kind of shitty, but it wasn't. That's not the way it was intended. No. Nope, not at all. I'm glad he's, you know what, he had, his story on Earth is still being told in yeah. the lamest way to say that. <laughs> no, it's, so, it's beautiful. Uh, so in this time, in 2009, Adam's starting up the podcast because the radio station ended. He has uh, a weekend to start. The show ends on uh, Thursday's the last episode because Friday they're flipping formats. And so by uh, Sunday at midnight, Monday morning, he has to have an episode posted. To get approved on iTunes takes longer than that. You can't even do that. Even at the time, it was harder to do, even though there was less shows being uh, processed. Chaffee pulls some magic, gets an uh, RSS feed on iTunes within 72 hours or less. We get a website up. All the while, Adam's best friend, not from childhood, but from like his teenage years, Donnie, mm -hmm. uh, who had been fired from his job as at E as the editor, uh, as Wild On, that show that would show like beach footage of people scantily clad. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, prob- he's probably fired due to downsizing, but he was known to keep the footage and share it uh, with other people illegally for oh. masturbatory reasons. Oh, masturbatory. Yeah. Masturbatory. I can't even say that word. Yeah, well, you shouldn't Mas- be doing that. Distributing those. That's not for you, uncensored. <laughs> that should, uh, don't do that. So anyways, this whole press thing started that uh, Donnie and Adam are going to start a podcast get- together. You know, two old boys in the valley make good and come through like this whole thing. I'm like, but guys, guys. Uh, Adam's already had a podcast since, since 2006. I told him about 2008. Donnie didn't tell him about this. I, I told him about it on air. I'm like, yeah, just, you know, we're just doing this, whatever. And so me and Chaffee are just putting our heads down, getting all the work done. Chaffee gets the website up. He, he does cash fly hosting that costs Adam 200 grand a month or some 20 grand a month. It was some crazy number. It was like wow. Was the first year. He has like $300,000. Adam can't earn any money because he still has his contract. Mm-hmm. Another radio station. So he literally can't earn money, but he's burning money now doing this podcast really early on. Chavi gets it all launched. Uh, Donnie and his family don't know how to do anything. They're quickly becoming these like control freaks. It eventually results in them creating a company around Adam called Ace Broadcasting. That wasn't Adam's company. Adam already has one. It's a different name. And uh, they try to get incorporated. They want 50% of Adam's earnings for life. So they want to step up in above his agent. Tailoring. And Adam was oh like, God. I don't do this. Like every day they'd pressure him for a contract or a deal. And he just, I, I would come out and visit and I'd see them after a show. They'd be like big vultures waiting for him to get in that room with him and talk to him and just sign this one. Adam, sign this one. And Adam, you could see, he just didn't want to do it. Eventually I got to a breaking point. He told Donnie, listen, you can still be involved with all the shows, still get all the money, everything. You can have half of all of my live shows. You don't have to even tour with us. You just have to let Mike August, uh, the business manager run everything. And that he'd already been working there the whole time. And he goes, no, nobody's going to be in charge of me. He goes, let's just have lunch or something. He's like, no, F you. I'm going to sue you. Yeah. And then so Donnie called me up. So Donnie did a bunch of weird shit over the years, uh, including with the film vault we'll get into. Uh, and I didn't want to believe a lot of it. I was trying to like, you know, like, well, he's Adam's best friend. He's not going anywhere. We have to like work with him. He chased Teresa Strauss or the news girl off. She emailed me telling me what a snake he was, how evil his family was not to trust them. I was wow. like, well, Donnie's a sexist. I can't change anything. I'm like 24. How am I going to, I'm not even out there. How am I going to make this guy not be a sexist and treat women badly? On air, he admits he never even pursued a woman to be a friend. He only pursues women for intimate relationships. Mm. He views them that way. He's just a very gross person. And he's not punished for that. Like, women loved him. He was, like, beloved by women. Like, he was, like, a cute teddy bear. He, like, got every woman he wanted. Meanwhile, Adam never got a girlfriend. And Donnie, this little short weirdo, got everybody. And he hated women. He Adam wasn't big enough to be getting the girls at this point? He had no self-esteem. He has the same oh, problem yeah. I have because of his parents. Yeah, me too. But Adam always thought he was ugly and terrible. He looks back now. He's like, oh, my God, I wasn't. But hmm. he, uh, he just he, he wouldn't pursue anything. And also, Adam only wants to be romantic with women he's attracted to. Everyone knows this because it was revealed on air, but Adam never talks about it. Adam hmm. got everyone's dream. He was in love with Molly Ringwald's sister. That was his Winnie Cooper his whole life. Hmm. And she's like a little bit like a year old or something. And when he was 16, she was like, ah, fuck it. Let's have sex. And he lost his virginity to the woman he was in love with. And they never had a relationship with her. She even talks about it on stage. So it's not even me revealing anything. She's proud That's of amazing. I yeah, mean, he never brings that part up. So he yeah. first time he has sex is with his dream girl. And so the rest of his life, he's like, he, lots of opportunities with women he's not attracted to. And instead of sleeping with them or like, you know, using them, he would just like not do that. Including one time where he wouldn't make out with a girl. So she told a group of guys, he hit her. They said, oh, that's not cool, man. And he goes, no, that d- didn't happen. And they go, well, what's he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like well, we'll kick your ass. He's like, well, uh, listen, I would fight you guys, but I just got knee surgery at orthoscopy. He goes, I'm going to break your other knee. Oh, my God. So he goes out in the street and this big Mexican guy gets his face. He knocks the guy out. Then his friend runs up with a baseball bat, hits Adam in the knee with his baseball bat. Uh... This guy ends up being a, a commercial airline pilot named Terry Mosier, who Adam knows the name of. He calls into the morning show with Brian there and says, yeah, I did that. While he's a commercial airline pilot admitting that he hit Adam with a baseball bat when Adam didn't do anything. And then Adam's wow. friends apprehended him a year later, brought him in a headlock to Adam in a bathroom with some chick he's making out with. Him. He goes, <laughs> what do you want to do with him, Adam? Adam goes, ah, just let him go. So there was no charges or anything against that nope. guy? No. Nope. And then Adam's friends dragged him to the bathroom to beat him up. And Adam goes, ah, just let him go. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. Yeah, no, that's Adam. But so yeah. anyways, Donnie, terrible guy, chased Teresa off. Uh, he ruined the film vault why it wasn't there on the orange couch for long. We'll get into that. He eventually tried to frame me for posting on the message board. People post as me on their website on Adam Kroll's own site. And said, right. But it wouldn't be my IP address. It would be the wrong state. And I'm like, yeah. that's not me, man. But it was clear he just didn't want me out there because I knew too much. And Chaffee was already being chased off. Chaffee went to Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jimmy Kimmel poached him. And Adam was kind of a man out alone. And so I got this uh, DVD set idea done where Adam's podcast were put on DVD. We sold them directly to fans, made $240,000. Wow. I told the idea to Mark Marin the first time he came in studio. He went and then gave the idea to his producer, who he then says invented podcast DVDs. I have pictures of me holding the discs up. 
explaining it to him literally in Adam's shop while he's eating all the donuts. I remember everything clear as day. He was concerned yeah. to go on air. He thought Adam was fight. I told him they'd already been on air with each other. They ended up doing a perfect podcast where they talked about farts instead of politics for an entire hour. And it was magical. But now that magical. Uh, <laughs> Producer of WTF is known as the inventor of podcast data DVDs when I'm the inventor of them. And that's just another thing that gets known to... world around as the inventor. Well, well, everyone ever on his thousandth episode, Mark Marin talked about him, how that made them money, how that kept them going without him doing that. And it's just like, he's oh, like, wow. my brilliant person. He's like, that guy didn't invent that. I did. And I told you about it to your face. And then I told you if you could use it and you should tell your producer because it's a good idea. So Adam made 240 grand. Mark Marin made like 100. So Adam made 240 G's. Donnie uh, made that money disappear. And then he didn't pay me. I didn't want anything, but Adam got super pissed. He's like, what? He's not paying you? And then eventually he gave me two grand. <laughs> so I got 1%, less than 1%. 1%. I got less than 1%. Yeah. yeah, I didn't want it though. I didn't care. So I didn't bother. But Adam was so fucking pissed. And Donnie was pissed about having to cut that check. He tried to cut out of the, comp- the company's money as opposed to his own money, even though he took He was just money. a dick to be a dick. Well, he just wanted stuff. He just wanted, he wanted... Adam was their loser buddy who became a millionaire. And so all of his friends, uh, it, was, it was Donnie, Donnie's cousin, Sandy, Donnie's wife, and then their other friend, uh, Maddie, who was very nice, but like they did, weren't millionaires like Adam. And they, they thought they're better than him. Like uh, Donnie's mom's a real estate agent. She bought all of Adam's properties. So Adam introduced her to Jimmy Kimmel. Adam made Donnie's mom a millionaire. Hmm. So he Jimmy and Adam aren't friends at all, eh? Oh, nobody is now. No, no, no. Yeah. So uh, after uh, Donnie decided he's going to go nuclear, he first tried to sever me from the network, told me I could never talk to Adam again. I was a mm-hmm. dangerous person. I have no misdemeanors, no felonies. I've never thrown a first punch. I don't do anything. At you, worst, I, I maybe called some a mean name on the internet once, but the times he was trying to frame me for weren't those times. So I was like, okay, you can't even do that. What are you trying to do, Donnie? So then after he, uh, he basically severed me from the network, I'm never going to talk to Adam again. He calls me up and says that uh, uh, that Adam's a terrible person that Adam hates me, he hates all of his fans, that he's a terrible guy, nobody should like him. He's going to sue Adam for everything he's got. He wants to get more dirt from me. He wants me to testify against Adam. Uh, he may have even been trying to like, like have me tell Adam this stuff. I don't know if he knew I was going to. But little did he know, I was going to meet Adam at a live show to run the boards for him with Mike August because Donnie wasn't there. And then I'm like, Adam, I got some bad news, buddy. I was like, you want it before or after the show? He's like, tell me now. I was like, you sure? You're going to do two, two live shows? He's like, tell me now. I'm like, Donnie's nah, going to sue you for everything. Here's all his plan. Here's what he's going to do. Here's all the beans. I'm, I'm right or die ace, man. I don't give a shit. It's Adam, Drew, and Anderson. I'm not going to take anybody else's side. Right as well. So uh, then uh, Adam braces for everything. Over the next series of months, Adam calls me when they're doing depositions. He's like, yeah, I'm watching Donnie lie his ass off on stand. Can you give me more details? Give me this. All of Adam's friends were there. Uh, Donnie's family just staring daggers at Adam like just being abusive and rude and lying about wow. him, trying to steal all his money. They wanted 50% of his earnings for life, of everything. Life Donnie's just everything. money hungry and fame hungry. Like, I guess clearly. he felt he was earned something, but it, like the whole story wasn't true. Donnie yeah. had Adam buy a new monitor, and Mike Lynch walked in on masturbating in the workday. Oh, uh, that's the most expensive uh, Apple monitor at the time, that super expensive one, circa 2009, 2010. Yeah. It was, like crazy. it was crazy overpriced, just so he could beat off to it at work. Like that's you should be fired for that. And Adam oh. wouldn't even bring that up in the depositions. I'm like, let's bring that up. Let's let's. He shouldn't have even continued working after that's a sex offense. He should yeah. actually be filed. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that to him. Yeah, Adam, you know what? I, the more you talk, the more I I like Adam as his uh, beliefs and his core. That's what even Anderson came around to him. It's crazy. Yeah, it's one of those things where they all everybody thought they knew the guy, but it wasn't quite accurate. I'm not lean. I'm not his politics. Like I don't lean towards a lot of that. But yeah, but that's not even that's so recent. It's it's so weird, dude. I can't even get into it. But there's a whole thing of like yeah. Fox News did something to people of a certain age, and post 9/11 yeah. did something. Yeah. And Adam watches all the news channels. And COVID something. did something to it. It changed well, ever, a lot of people. So yeah, there's a whole thing happening. There's multi layered, but. I'm not even sure what are his politics. People will ask him on one episode, so you're a Republican, huh? And he goes, yeah, I guess, whatever. And the next episode, so you're a Republican. He's like, no, I'm a you know, 90s liberal. He's like, he's like, he's like I'm, a, I'm still this. I, I believe in all these things. He's like, I agree with all liberals on 95% of issues, and I disagree on five. And that's kind of always mm. been his thing. Yeah, where he's okay. Like, and then also, I, my whole argument for him all the time back in the day was, do your parents agree with you 100% of the time? Do your best friend agree with you 100% of the time? 95% is a pretty good odds. It's like, yeah, hey, I agree with yeah. you on this, this, and this, and I disagree on this. Yeah. All right, well, we have a lot of common ground. People I just, think that way. People yeah. cut Adam out of their listening habits as soon as they, they disagree with him, unaware that Drew was actually voting Republican all throughout Love Line, not Adam. Adam wasn't voting. <laughs> and so it, people just have perceptions. That's the whole other thing is how people perceive people on shows and who they are. And I've mis- done it myself, and so has Anderson. All of us have kind of done it where you don't really know the, who the people are. And you, you think things about them that aren't actually true based on 
again, presumption. what you've heard and and like exactly know, what happened to Anderson with the Jimmy Kimmel stuff where Jimmy Kimmel, uh, you know, Anderson can't come along when nobody wanted yeah. that. Yeah. So where if are you? Asked Adam, he went, why, why, why can't Anderson come along? I would be like, I guess. Like, Jimmy, Adam said that? Jimmy said that uh, no, Anderson, he banned Anderson. I Oh, I thought you said Jimmy told Anderson. I mean, told Adam no more. Like no, no, he told every, all the underlings. So he told everybody besides Adam. So Jimmy people doesn't... do people do this to Adam all the time. Okay, and they try okay. to speak for him. Okay. When, he, when you actually ask ask him, he, he doesn't care. Like people like mm. run around like, oh my god, oh my god. Like there's like this uh, famous story of uh, there's like a, a PA on a set, and he goes, Adam, do you need anything to drink? He goes, ah, peach snapple. So this guy <laughs> drove around town for three hours looking for peach snapple, like peach puree. Uh huh. I love not, peach snapple. Not peach app. No peach tea snapple. He didn't understand that was all they made. So oh. he held on to this, and like he came back, and he was miserable. And he told him they just don't have peach snapple. And then like years later, he met this guy, and he goes, "Yeah, you chased me out of the industry." And I was like, well, "What happened?" He goes, "Yeah, I was on a set, and you want a peach snapple." And I came back, and then I never worked again. And I was like, "I didn't care. Peach, peach <laughs> snapple tea." What? <laughs> The, the littlest things, snapple. man. The guy held on to it for like 15 years. <laughs> he literally blamed on why he wasn't in the industry anymore. Wow. The yeah, littlest just, things can ruin. It, it's crazy, oh, dude. It, me and Anderson didn't, Anderson didn't like me. People don't even know this part. So most of the fans who dislike me, it's because Anderson used to rail on me on air. People don't even know that. What show did he used to rail on you? On, on the Love film line? Ball. On the oh, film the- ball. On the film vault. About this very timeline we're discussing right now. Because I never got to finish it and nobody would ever let me finish talking or post it or look at what I was saying. Wow. I didn't know that. Now he So uh, at this time, uh, 2009, uh, Brian's diagnosed, mm-hmm. called into question his life on earth, whatever. Adam's going to have this thing called Shakespeare Charity Event at Adam Kroll's Malibu home next to uh, Howie Mandel's house where Howie Mandel's hip hop sons filming like music videos all the time and stuff. And is this to raise money for Brian or just no? A, this is uh, to raise money for inner city youth to practice Shakespeare and get good at arts, which okay. Adam always makes fun of and jokes about. Like, why would you do this? His wife was passionate about the charity. He's cool. He's like, I want to help inner city kids. So everybody paid money. We all showed up. Uh, it was like 150 bucks, 300 bucks for VIP. He had a name tag. He just walked around his backyard. Uh, I was so nervous. I haven't met any of these people before. I didn't even want to come. Uh, low self-esteem. I don't like how I look. I knew my pictures would be all the message board. I was going to be torn apart. Uh, nothing really uh, obviously terribly wrong with me, just lifetime of uh, abuse and uh, unkindness. And so I just didn't want to be there in person. Like it just yeah. never, I never want to be anywhere in person. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, oh, I guess I'll have a beer. I have an empty stomach. I don't know. I'm with this guy, Neil. I don't even know, but he was nice enough to drive me. <laughs> and uh, I have a, it's one of these uh, beers that like the, the swirl top. I don't know what was it, Miller who was doing it at the time. Mm-hmm. Where the top is like swirled, so it goes down faster or something. I don't know. If, 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 oh if, yeah, the tornado or whatever. So yeah, I drink very, one of these things. Uh... I'm like, I'm fine, and I'll, I'll have another one. I'm fine, and then it just starts foaming up in my empty stomach. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna vomit at Adam's Malibu house immediately. I haven't even been here 30 minutes. So me and Neil are walking. I'm like, excuse me, and nobody's walk, watching. I walk over a bush and just hurl into a bush. Oh no. Then I proceed to oh, meet everybody no. for the first time, and then I get up to Brian and his wife Christy. Yeah, and Brian's looking shaky as shit. They weren't married. Like, the, kind of hold they weren't up. married yet. Uh, she engaged. Whatever they were at the time. So fiance. Okay. So the right. I was called now wife Christy, and so they're there together. And <laughs> I just uh, wanted to catch you on something. On I just wanted to be able to catch you the geo on something. I did mean now wife when I said it, but you got me. Mm-hmm. But I just, okay, it, keep it, going. It was his current wife, his present wife. Christy. <laughs> but so, well, that's how we know her. But uh, she was there and with him, kind of holding him up. He had a red cap on. There's pictures of me talking to him. He yes. does, he's looking a little uh, swollen, and he just looks bad. And that same day, I met Dr. Bruce, who was a fill-in doctor for Dr. Drew, a really good guy. Mm-hmm. I met his sister there as well at the event, and she has Brian's exact condition. Oh, really? And she'd been living with him for 10 years, and she was fine. She was like per- she was normal. Oh, Where good. So I was like, oh, shit. I was like, Brian got some a bad diagnosis. This this lady's fine. I was like, Bruce, you got to tell Brian whatever you told her. You got to help him out. And then I go over to Brian. I'm like, Brian, love you, man. So nice to finally meet you. Uh, you're going to pull through, but you know, blah, blah, blah. What about the film vault? Are you coming back to the film vault? And this broke my heart. Christy goes, uh, he's never coming back to the film vault. And she was very, she wasn't mean, but she was stern yeah. and short. 
And like, yeah. I almost wanted to cry, but I was like, I was a 23 year old man or something at the time. I'm like, I, I can't embarrass myself. And I was so like, what form <laughs> of the film vault are we in right now? This is the film vault aired its last episode, which was uh, February 18th, 2009. And okay. it's basically dead. And we don't know where it's going to happen, what's going to happen with it. Oof. This is May 18th, 2009. And I'm trying to get the show back. So mm-hmm. I'm basically the only one, like everyone's basically written off. Brian is dead. Anderson didn't want to do anything, or maybe he's planning behind the scenes at this point, but he doesn't know what to do. The show's on pause. Is this and, pre orange couch? Oh yes. Okay. Okay. So I Adam thought... has started the orange couch for his own podcast. There are no other podcasts that have immediately started. Okay. Okay. So this is 2009. His shit's a hit. They're trying to build up the network. Donnie's still there and uh, okay. they hire on Logan. Logan is a friend of Donnie's uh, nephew. So he's oh. a friend who has a okay. nephew and they hire him as an intern. Uh, so nepotism hire. Hmm. No Nepo experience, baby. Nothing. Yeah, no experience, nothing. He turns out to be pretty talented. He can follow along. Although he's trained by Donnie. Donnie is a terrible audio engineer. Donnie recorded episodes through the laptop mic by accident. Donnie be stoned all the time. So he learns how to do everything the wrong way, which has to be repaired over the years through some of my techniques through Anderson taught back to him, which is weird, which is the whole ultimate weirdness of how I process love line. It's how I learned how to do my stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, so anyways, Logan starts there. Uh, Adam, we're at the charity event. I get told film vault's dead forever. Oh. I'm the only film vault fan that knows this. My heart is broken. I can't have any reaction at all because Brian's doing something far more serious. And Christy wasn't trying to be mean to me. To this day, I'm still scared of her. I don't know what just in my head somewhere. Like, I'm terrified of her. She's the nicest person in the world. She's lovely and she's hilarious and talented. And I loved her show and I, commercial grade. And I loved her segment on the Corolla show, but I'm still deep down partially terrified of her. So it and looks so like everybody... at this point, Anderson and Brian, though, have only um, recorded like 15 episodes. Yeah, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, plus Real Beat. Okay. Plus there's a couple in there I think we lost. So okay. let's say uh, 20 episodes, 24 episodes or less, two dozen and or less. And people were listening? Like they were Yeah, because the, the, the game. podcast got posted officially. Okay. So once the podcast got posted officially, it became a real show. And yeah, all the so 40,000 we... Kroll listeners then transferred yeah. over. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And we remember Anderson saying and and that it was like, when they first went on, they were high on iTunes. That's uh, that's, as the, like, that's not even there. Yet. That that's the next stage. We're not even there. Yet. Okay, okay. I'll I'll shut the fuck up. So this is this is the KLSX <laughs> podcast. Several thousand people probably downloaded them, and then also thousands of people downloaded the pirate files I was providing. So we, we had we, we we built up a thing, and on this message board, I was also providing love line on these secret threads. So we had threads on this message board that has like no views. My threads had five hundred and ninety-eight thousand views in a year. Or wow. new, like we had crazy numbers, right? Like, like it was just crazy traffic on this message board. Were you able threads. to make money off of that anyway? No, 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 oh. no. I lost. Okay. Money. I, I was, I was running up credit card debt. Yeah. And people were calling me a thief and a scam artist oh, and God. everything in the book. Uh, Selena, that I was going to murder Adam and Brian. That I still have to sit with that. So, like, so much to the degree that I didn't want to meet them or be around them because people would accuse me of trying to harm them or do something to them. So I just try to like, like, I basically let other people dictate how I live my life so I don't offend strangers. Can I ask you about that Selena thing anymore? I don't, or or was that something you just brushed by for a reason? I don't I don't understand. Oh, just with the idea of a, a fan killing a, a famous person. Oh, like Selena. Yeah. So that's what I say is like that I'm gonna murder Adam because I'm like a crazy I got you. Person. Okay. Unaware you... they don't know my personality at all. That I'll just leave and that's what <laughs> I do is I, I ghost and vanish for years at a time. Yeah. When people are mean to me. I don't try to force my way. Well, the Anyways. super fan Geo doesn't sound like. Like, an, you know, if you bothered nice. to know the history, though, and that some lady gave exactly. me the time, I'm like, sure, whatever. I was just trying to be nice to a nice lady. I don't know. Well, and Teresa actually gave me my first iPod, the, the one who called me Superman Giovanni. Uh, she had these online stalkers who were trying to get her to quit. Uh, she almost committed herself, and she eventually did. They uh, were trying to ruin her life for years uh, because yeah. they just hated her. It had nothing to do with her, it turns out. They did the same thing to Allison and Gina. It was just any girl who was on the show. And they'd really? always say it was because of the unique girl but then when she'd leave they'd, they'd they'd love her the last one and hate the new one and they did it for three in a row wow and then they tell you about how great the last one was it's like dude i have all these posts from you saying how she'd kill herself and you're writing this stuff on her mommy blog and trying to ruin her life and like who was her. saying that oh hundreds of people there was these online oh. trolls who were doing this oh that's, that's so they were like horrible. ruining Teresa's life as the news girl brian didn't get any of this because he was a dude he was a sound effects guy yeah so I, i'd help out and like get these people to stop by any means necessary and it usually worked and Teresa just appreciated she hired pri- private investigators and stuff they couldn't get him to stop wow i eventually found one of the main guys that's reasoned with him 
He was living with his uncle. He was sad. He loved Buckethead, the guitarist. He loved Taylor <laughs> Swift, circa 2009. And he was mm-hmm. an adult man. I liked Taylor Swift circa 2009. Oh, he, he liked her for... Teardrops on my guitar. Sorry. No, no I, I love her for the same reasons. He liked her for <laughs> Olsen Twins turning 18. Oh, okay. He also I probably liked the music. But like uh, it, was, it was not about that. And I reasoned with the guy. Eventually, he was like, he, he just stopped doing it. But it, it was, I, made him, I made him realize how much more pathetic I was than him. So like, instead of like, threatening <laughs> him, he was like, gross. I don't want to be part of these, this fan base anymore. He left. So uh, just so, uh, before we get into right now, Gio is told that Brian will never appear on TFV again, and the show is done. So we are going to leave it there. I am gonna. We are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Sweet. I'm just going to go beep so I can see that. Sorry if I did that in your ears. Um, I just got to run to the bathroom, so... Oh, potty break. Yeah. Is that okay? I think I'm going to get a drink. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom, get a break, and I'll be, uh, get a beer, and I'll be right back. Cool, buddy. Okay. Thank you. Howdy. Nope, he's still, he is still gone. <laughs> Teardrops on my guitar. He's the reason for the teardrops on my guitar. The mm-hmm. only thing that keeps me wishing on a wishing star. I love T Swizzle. I do. I like her better now in her. But I mean I was a I was a country fan, so I grew up with her and I was like, oh, I like this girl. I was introduced via an ex who was a big fan and oh. I, I wanted to write her off, but then uh, the I think the VMAs thing happened too, and I was like, Oh, that's cool. Uh, like her, her standing up for herself and stuff afterward. Um, so yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. With her, with how she, you know, I, I liked how her continued reaction. Eventually, her song I liked about. It. Yeah. yeah, I got into her around the time, the time she had that Superman song, like the acoustic uh, yeah. three part cut. Yeah. It. Okay, so 
Uh, one, two, back three, beep. beep. Welcome. We are back. Uh, we are going to continue some in-depth film vault. We'll try to make it shorter from here on out because we only have three years left as opposed to how far we've come. <laughs> uh, Avery I mean, pointed out that it spans uh, two centuries. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I I have all the time in the world, uh, but if you oh, got a... Okay, oh, all I right. have no heart out. All this right. is just the <laughs> listener's concern who hates hearing Geo talk. Oh, I mean, fuck! If there, I'm gonna split this up into two, uh, for, oh, yeah. like, so I'm gonna have the you know, TFB our... history, then the superhero thing. That's four exactly, minutes. <laughs> exactly. So if people really don't want to listen to this, then they can go. Um, oh, I like it. Yeah, but I think there's gonna be a lot of ears that want to hear a lot of these stories. It's nice to know where your show you like comes from because this stuff's never explained. You would think in the modern era, all this stuff would be recorded in like a Wikipedia article or somewhere. None of it's yeah. anywhere. Yeah. People were moving like uh, Allison, the second news girl, was just deleted from Wikipedia because of some random man's whim. And it's like, oh, you can't tell me that there wasn't a little bit of sexism Jesus. in that. Like, no, she's not a sure. person. She doesn't exist. Yeah. She's a famous I... person. She's worked on famous show. I don't. It doesn't make sense. To me. And a lot of podcasts today are just like. Yeah, there's no story behind it, right? Like this. This just I started a podcast. Okay, yeah. good for you. Another white man. Yeah, five <laughs> Yeah, exactly. School sports. I hate that bitch. I got my own show now. Oh uh, yeah, I've listened to, you know, some friends' podcasts where it's like, listen to my podcast, and I'm like, well, you guys are just you're not saying anything mm-hmm. <laughs> of value. My <laughs> ultimate anyways. example of that is the Mitch Cast. Is it? Is it me? Not you. No, 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 no. <laughs> so in 2009, when Adam started, there was all these other guys who had podcasts. Turns out this guy, Mitch in Portland, perfectly mm-hmm. nice dude, really nice. Maybe like religious or something a little bit. And his mm-hmm. buddy had a show called The Mitch Cast. And he's like, I'm the coolest guy in Portland. He was just like, white <laughs> dude, married, kids. And like, he was like, here's what's going on. And like, he showed up at the Corolla shows. They brought a Rainier cherry pie. So it was clear. It's like clear yellow, but it's delicious. But it's just wow, cherry pie. never even heard of that. What's it called? Oh, you know, you know Rainier cherries, the big yellow mountain ones? Yeah. Yellow flesh. They, they had a Rainier cherry pie. So it was just like a cherry pie, but it was clear or yellowish. It's like the same color as inside those cherries. I've only ever seen it once. It was in Portland. Huh. They brought it to the Latin Theater for Adam because okay. he loves Rainier cherries. And the Mitch cast was just like a local guy in Portland who had a podcast. And it was always my example of just kind of like, but why? <laughs> like, but, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's like, why? Where's this going to go? But maybe it doesn't need to go anywhere. Maybe it's just a hot, it was like, you know, it's a hobbyist podcast, I guess. It's just it's a weird era of podcast too, where anybody could have like struck it rich or made made it big. It was mm-hmm. kind of like the gold rush of podcasting. Yeah, nine because of Adam, it lo- you know it, it led to what the fuck with Mark Marin. It led to Earwolf Comedy Podcast Network. It led to Nerdist. All this stuff started because of Adam's podcast. That, that, yeah. all those people will tell you the same. Just, I started one in about 2010, but I started with I didn't know anybody who loved music. Did you think movies, Adam Carolla? Right. What's that? Did you thank Adam Carolla? I did. Yeah, I sent mm-hmm. him a I sent him a written uh good job. Letter. All right, yeah. cool. Totally no, approved. I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I um okay, so I think we've we're just a little bit past Brian is diagnosed with cancer. Yep. Um, and then G- Geo has just been told that Brian will never appear on TFV again and the show is done. And that is because um the show was continuing. Well, it hadn't yet. So like, we, it hadn't so all yet. We know, I don't. I don't know if they knew yet this yet or what. But it, it, I, I asked, like, you know, it, when Brian gets healthy, could he ever come back? I'm kind of like pushing a little bit, and it was like, no, it's not happening. I was like, okay. So and I, you know, I dropped it. I didn't want to be too disrespectful. I was just trying because to, then you know, Christy like, was even. So then Kristen, Christy must have been even angrier when she found out that it was going to continue without Brian or, and that was I'm obviously assuming she not probably had feelings case. on Brian's behalf. Cause she loves him so much. And Brian yes. even had feelings and Brian oh. never has feelings. About that kind of yeah. Stuff. Sorry. So yes. uh, July 27th, 2009, Steven uh, from the UK, he launches the film vault.net and he hosts all the first uh, non Kayla sex episodes, the free to HD episodes, basically everything we do, all the pirate stuff. He puts everything up there and he puts the top five films to miss fall winter with Mike Carano and Miss Movies co-hosting with Anderson and Brian's absence, much to Brian's chagrin, which he'll reveal later on. He felt like Anderson was replacing him. Anderson legitimately felt like he was just keeping the chair warm for him. And Anderson says he never thought he was going to die or go away. He thought he, he knew he'd be back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, I don't know how much he believes that or he did at the time. He's well past it now. But uh, Do you really Tyler think White... he was upset? I didn't. I, I never got oh, the Oh, yes, impression. he was. He's, they've had it out had on air. There's a film ball about that. 
He's he said to Anderson, "Oh, you mean when you replace me?" Yeah, like, like he hates those episodes. Okay, he won't listen to them. And like I've even brought up like when I, when Brian was coming back after this, I was like, "Oh, great! Now that the shows come back, let's bring uh, Mike Carano and Miss Movies on." And like Miss Movies was still coming on as Red Light Green Light, but Mike Carano wasn't coming on as a co-host. That wasn't happening. Yeah. I'm like, but, but I was like, I was like, but he was so good. But Brian wasn't even receptive to that, even though he likes Mike. That's yeah. how he was not happy. I so, don't understand yeah. why, how Brian couldn't understand all of that. But he thought he was dying and he's being replaced from the thing he created. The show was his impetus that he made mm-hmm. Anderson do, and now Anderson's taking it over without him, without even consulting him, and without saying, "Hey, here's what I'm going to do." Like, it's it's all it's all miscommunication, dude. It's all people thinking yeah. the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, Anderson's the guy that a month later. Uh, or it was pulling Brian's penis out of his pants so he could urinate the movies and putting it yeah. back for him. So and like, I, what, I nobody in life would do that for me. Habit. Nobody would do that for me if my life depended on it. Or a hobby. Yeah. Like I do it as a hobby. Like I go to, I wait. You go bathrooms. You help cancer guys with their dicks. I know. Yeah. Do you have cancer? It, I can help. No, it, I can you get something out of it. They get you. something out of it. Win win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a hero. You are I'm, a hero. I'm a hero. I don't like to say it, but I am a hero. Sorry. So Stephen uh, from the UK launches the film vault.net. Um, yeah, and people you... always like to make a thing about me and Stephen hating each other. There's I was no just going to ask that. Oh, my God. On the message board, uh, he also had hosted my Loveline files for me. That's called Loveline Central. So he was hosting Loveline Central and the film vault files in the same place. But the mm-hmm. film vault wasn't part of Loveline. He was there because he didn't have a separate site. And uh, the site got shut down for uh, hosting the files. Something, somebody reported it. And I got bummed out. I was like, oh, man, all that work down the tubes. This is before Loveline tapes existed or any other website that was inspired by my work. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of sad about it. And I, like, made some posts. And he was just, he, like, he made fun of me. He was basically calling me, like, a pooper or a pussy. <laughs> so and, you like, guys... It was, it was just harmless. It wasn't even anything bad. Are you still like, in oh. contact at all in any way? Oh, no. We, we, never, we never spoke after that. You don't know where he is now to this I think he's still in Ireland. I don't think he wanted anything to do with me. Like, we weren't, like, best friends. We were just two guys on a message board. Mm-hmm. I gave him files. He put them on a site. That's too bad. It'd be and, someone I would love to interview. Yo, you can get hold of him through Anderson. They're still in touch with him. Oh, is okay. All right. Well, oh, yeah, maybe I will. He's a, he's a really nice dude. So he, he did okay. this website. He kept it up from 2009 through 2012. He, he did it all himself. I don't think they ever paid him. Yeah. And they started hosting these independent podcasts on uh, his website. Okay. Interesting. Filmvault.net. So the and, first uh, film, um, what the first podcast? The was topic top was five. top five films to miss fall winter. Okay. So it was kind of a weird uh, title too. It's like skip these movies. That aren't yeah, I know for the first one back. Hey, here's it's some also, new it's movies. It's also not the film vault spirit to like tell you not to watch movies that they haven't seen yet. Even like Red Light Green Light's the closest they get to that. But that's oh, before films it was even movies they haven't even seen. I thought they were saying here's movies we've seen and we urge you to skip it. But I don't think so because it's fall winter and this came out in July. So I'm pretty sure from memory there's like here's the movies coming up that sound bad. I didn't start listening till 2011. So that's cool. See, that's that's why we're doing this because people don't yeah. know all shit. Yeah. So when I was listening to these episodes in Hawaii, there's like stories of me walking to the Walmart at like 11 p.m. listening to the pirate episodes over and over again, the first podcast files, and then picking up an air conditioner, getting on a bus, getting back to my apartment at like 2:30 in the morning, <laughs> trying oh to install gosh. a window-mounted air conditioner with the film vault just playing, and it's like it's it's so we're we're all connected. So people are listening oh, I know. to these files. That's, that's what I said. Then, like we now, are a family. It, it's a weird thing. So, mm-hmm. anyways, with all this happening, uh, 2009, it is announced on air that Brian will host some sort of film show on Ace Broadcasting Network. Mm-hmm. And my brain just started, what, 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 what? I, have to, I have to do something. I have to save the show. I have to do something. So uh, well, after literally over a year, this is in 2010 now, of me pestering Brian, Donnie, and Adam, I get Adam to say on air, because I was on the Adam Carolla show, I think five or six times. I'm a legendary Hall of Famer guest. I'm wow. uh, basically their Steve Martin. Alcohol. Hey, that was a sniff there. That was a de- mm-hmm. deserved sniff. That was a Brian <laughs> sniff. <laughs> it wasn't dude. <laughs> self-satisfied sniff uh so after doing that i get adam to say yes brian can have the film vault and he can call it the film vault he wants to and yes anderson can come work here i won't block him from working here nice okay and that's the thing that brian would never broach brian would even promote the film vault on the morning show when he was working for the yeah. morning show making the film vault. so he wasn't gonna stick his neck on the line for a guy he's kind of mad at it and say hey can anderson come work here too boss so he wasn't yeah. gonna do that uh, and nobody did. I was. The only I even feel to do bad it. sometimes saying to like Anderson and Brian, like, "Hey, do you mind like shouting out my podcast?" Like, so I kind of get where Brian's coming from. You know, oh, yeah. it, it, each place has its place, and and you don't feel like it's the right place to bring. Brian up doesn't something. like rocking the boat, and then also yeah, exactly. How people talk about Anderson too. It's like, am I going to die on this hill that nobody else will die on? But Geo 
the guy who has nothing to lose, who's best buddies with Ace Man, yeah. <laughs> who, who helps him through his lawsuits, can just say, "Hey, Ace Man, can Anderson come work here on the on the podcast?" And they air it, and he said yes. And it was hey, Ace Man, can podcast. can Anderson come over to play? <laughs> yeah, and it it was dependent on Brian what Brian wants. So yeah. I guess Brian and Anderson they worked out whatever they're going to work out. It has nothing to do with me. That's all I did. That's my only role was recording the pirate shows, essentially creating a little bit of a fandom on the message board. Anderson mm. even came to that message board back in 08. He came as member Tiburon because he loves sharks and his, his work. And mm. he was kind of funny. He joked around with us a little bit. He was a little harsh post a couple of times. He's like, what, you guys stealing our show, pirating our show? He's like, oh, well, thanks. You know, like, but it was just kind of, it wasn't really involved. Yeah. And then, like, he told me to fuck off or something. And he never came back. Uh, but so that's all I did in the show, but that's the thing that Anderson always is a sticking point and he would use on air and he go, listen to you. I know you're listening right now. You didn't create the show. You didn't save the show. You didn't do that. Like he'd get mm. mad at me and say stuff, but it was nothing I ever, I never said any of that. Mm. I was just trying to record history accurately as it unfolded. And Anderson at the time was a little more hostile. Didn't know who I, who I was, where I was coming from. At the like very least, something. at the very least you helped the show immensely. Yeah, I guess I, I just, I just, all I did was get Adam to say, yes, he could do this one part. They did all the work. I don't know what they did behind the scenes, yeah. but 2010, the film ball and ACE broadcasting begins. So it starts relatively early uh, before May. Cause the, I have an email from May from Brian where me and him are talking about, uh, Hey, do you have the old list we used to do? I'm like, Oh yeah, here's this old list. I found it from the way back machine or whatever. Like, Here, take them all. It, use these. And then me going, Oh, the show is flowing pretty good. Here's what I think of this, blah, blah, blah. So they're doing that. And then in 2011, July, uh, due to having never been paid one dollar for over a year's worth of episodes, due to not signing the unprofessional and possibly illegal contract that actually may have gotten Donnie in trouble if they did sign, uh, proposed by Donnie and his family, uh, who were you know trying to hijack Adam's broadcasting career, this fake company Ace Broadcasting that didn't actually exist. So there, like, there's a multitude of reasons why you can't sign that contract. They want full ownership, and okay. this wasn't Adam. Adam has no idea this is happening. I, they're trying to take full ownership of Adam at the same time too. They're trying to pod people Adam as well. He, he has no say over. He's his friend. So he's yeah. just like, I don't know what to do. I don't like this. I'm uncomfortable. As we will always do with Adam. He's not good at that stuff. So and, uh, how, like, how many episodes? And these episodes are going out as podcasts, right? Podcast once a week. And this uh, is Orange Couch. Yeah, over 52 of them, I believe. Okay. And, over 52 uh, on the Ace broadcast. On the Orange Couch, Logan's the producer. Yeah, they have a, some guests on. It's kind of a different format than they do now. It's kind of more like a traditional podcast. I always loved them. hearing Logan's girlfriend at the time, like Snig, like you know, Snigger in the background, or uh, it wasn't or... his girlfriend. That was Katie. Who's Katie? I did. I don't never understood who. Oh, that this is, is a great story, buddy. This is a great. Let's make me real sad though, because it makes me so sad. Oh. So Logan had a, there was two other interns at Corolla Show who were the first unpaid interns along with me. There was four of us. There was mm -hmm. four interns. Uh, it was funny. Donnie and his family called themselves the Core Four, like to mm -hmm. cut. And Adam was not included. That was their secret oh. meeting group. And this came on the lawsuit. So you never met Core Anderson Four, during this? No, Anderson wasn't there yet. So Anderson was. This was 09 before Anderson okay. came on in 2010. Okay. Okay. So uh, I don't. I've, I've only interacted with him on a message board. That's all I've done. And then also, okay. I called into Doctor Drew's morning show because Drew also had a morning show in 2008. And I asked him about vaccines because my parents never vaccinated me because they didn't love me. And I just wanted to schedule because I couldn't get one from a doctor. And they kept trying to give me the wrong vaccine saying, oh, you want boosters? I'm like, no, I have never had the basic ones. I just need to know the order of operations to get them so I don't get the wrong ones. Yeah. I can't get a booster for one I've never had the base for. But yeah. they didn't understand that. And Drew tried to explain it to me. It was too early. It was 2008. So nobody really had the adult vaccine thing. Now it's kind of figured out. And now So I'm you knew about long. COVID back in 2008? This was regular vaccine. I'm kidding. Is, I know. Uh, I'm, so, I'm being an idiot. I, I I'm sorry. It's just a, it's a, it, it kills me, man. I, all I wanted was to be able to swim in Lake Washington my entire life. I lived next to it. All my friends did. I couldn't because I had active polio. You had polio? The active? Lake. They dumped medical waste in the lake in the 70s. There's still active polio samples pulled from Lake Washington oh. to this very day. So that's why you swimming didn't swim. It, swimming in it can result in you getting polio and you're fucked. Wow, this episode's making me out to seem so dumb. But anyways. Oh, you're not uh, dumb at all. <laughs> you're not, you're, you're, I'm right there with you, man. This is all complicated, crazy. So, anyways, we're the first four interns. I'm remote, so I was in the. By the time so the podcast remote. started, I moved from Hawaii to Chicago to get my job back. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, a basically I'm two months back into my job or three months. And when the radio show gets canceled and the podcast starts, I'm helping Mike Choppy remotely. We get it all launched. I do all this stuff with him. Nobody has any idea. We did all the work. Choppy did everything. I just helped him. I was basically a sounding board, but I was there. I witnessed it. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the, Mark, I'm the Adam Curry of RSS feeds. Hey, why don't you put that <laughs> there, boss? Oh, okay. Good job. <laughs> so I'm that guy. So I'm there witnessing this all remotely. They hire Logan. 
Logan, uh, and then they hire Katie, who Logan, I think, knows. Katie is another intern. She's great. They call her Blaster Girl uh, because Damashek would have her play the blaster sound effect on Dave's of Thunder, another podcast I did with Dave mm-hmm. Damashek, who was the co-host on the morning show, who then eventually got his own podcast because Adam always gives people extra free jobs and money, <laughs> takes care of everybody. And so, so Katie I came was there. in at the I started listening at the end of the Orange Couch Day, Orange Couch Days, and I didn't really know who Katie. I thought she was Logan's girlfriend, just laughing everyone in the did. background. Everyone okay. always thought they were. Okay. Everyone always thought they were dating. Katie was like co-producer. She'd also produce and do some stuff sometimes as well. Oh. They would go on the After Disaster at night with Anderson and Mike Carano and Tyler White, and like get drunk and play with machetes in the parking lot. The After Disaster <laughs> was called the Love Line After Disaster. It was an independent podcast recorded by Anderson with his friends after Love Line aired. And they would just fuck around. So when did and after so anyways, the after uh, wow I can't after disaster when did that start? That started uh, 2011 ish. Okay, so around, right this around this time. There. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Katie had already been at Corolla for about a year now. Okay. Logan been there. There's this other guy, Gabe. Gabe was a nice guy. Uh, Gabe really wanted to work on The Walking Dead in Atlanta. Uh, he was out there. He was trying his best. Really good dude. Um, I came out to like a live show, and I was supposed to help out. And uh, I never eat at live shows because I'm a vegetarian, by, not by choice. I drown and die as a baby. There's never any food for me. We're at the improv club. I just assume they're not going to have any food. Katie and Logan invited me to eat, but they were kind of cold shouldering me. Like, there's this thing of like, I'm the remote intern, and people always acted like I'm trying to like shove my way in or do something. So, like, the one day the Make a Wish kids there, it was me, uh, they were like, hey, you want to come eat with us? But I, I felt like they didn't want me around, so I didn't, I didn't join them. I stayed with Mike Dawson, the announcer, and I helped <laughs> set up the, the live show. And I was just working all day long. And then at the end of the day, I was supposed to go crash at Gabe's house because I had no money. I'm a poor person. I was coming from living in Hawaii off my credit cards. Don't have a license at the time. Just got my job back. It's $8 an hour. I've been without a job for two years. It's terrible. And uh, so Gabe's nice enough to let me crash on his couch with his roommates. So I okay. get back at like midnight. It's silent. The sliding glass door is open. A house I've never been to. I'm walking uh, at nighttime. It's yeah. dark. There's a couch with a blanket on it. I just drank two gallons of water because I was, I was dehydrated all day. So I just drank one of those giant ones. Yeah, and uh, I'm having some stomach problems you discussed earlier because <laughs> I have an empty stomach, and yes, I basically yeah. just do what you do when you prepare for a colonic. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom, and so there's mushrooms empty. growing out of the floor. Oh wow! Literal mushrooms. Come on, and Gabe. Paper thin walls with all three of their bedrooms surrounding me. Uh huh. And what's about to happen? There's going to be noise. It's all going to be liquid, but there's going to be a lot of noise, and it's going to sound probably like a gunshot. Well, so in my mind, you... I, go, I go, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pretend this didn't happen. Uh, I'm just going to go to bed. And I go to mm. bed, wake up in the morning. Shit, I got to get my flight. Call a cab. Get in the cab. This is pre-Uber. Uh, cab comes. I'm like, what is that smell? I'm like, this cab driver is disgusting. Like, this is gross. I'm like, man, I'm not, I guess I'm going to tip this guy, but I'm really grossed out. Get through security at the Burbank Airport. Bob Hope Airport is a tiny little part. It still smells. I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Look at myself. Nothing on me. I'm like, what the fuck is that smell? My pants. I'm wearing brown uh, dickies. Mm-hmm. That wasn't probably not a good idea. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm wearing them. There's no, nothing on them. Nothing on my pants. Nothing. Pull them off. I'm like, what's that? My butt feels a little weird. It's like it's like dry, though. Like, we got wet and dried. Apparently, in my sleep, I sharded. But it's all liquid, so there's no material. It's just butt liquid. <laughs> Oh trying my, my pants God. with a gross smell. So then I realize I've left it all over his blanket on that couch and maybe on the couch itself. Oh, so I call a cab back and run outside the airport. It's a tiny airport. I get in the cab, race back to this house I've never been to before, open the sliding glass door, pull the blanket off. Luckily, there's nothing anywhere, but the blanket does smell like butt. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw this out the trash. I put it on top of the trash can just in case he wants or something. And then I call Gabe. I run back to the airport, get back to the security, get on my plane, get to Denver. So I get to Denver. I call Gabe. I tell him what happened. So embarrassed. I got to tell him the truth. I say, I go, I'm sending you money. I send him like 80 bucks or something. Uh, and uh, he's like, oh, you don't have to do that. Uh, Katie's, of course, there in the background. Here's everything. Uh, not a confidant. Uh, this comes up later. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe eventually leaves, goes to the work on The Walking Dead. Tragically, he nice. passed away in his sleep oh. uh, last year. Nobody knows oh, what happened. Oh. His girlfriend posted on Facebook. I couldn't get a hold of Logan or Katie. I finally got a hold of Katie on Instagram. She had like, a, oh, that's that's sad. He was a nice guy, and that's about it. Nobody mm. on air would give him a, a rest in peace in memoriam. Nobody remembered him on staff. He worked mm. there for a year. Adam mm. remembered him. Oh yeah. Yeah, but no, nobody else did. And so, well, kind of... I mean, a lot of people like 
I just, I just see myself in that so much. Just this dude worked yeah. through, put his heart, sweat, and tears to go, and nobody remembers it existed. I know. He's dead now. Uh, so, anyways, uh, it, Katie eventually left uh, the network because she wanted to work at Earwolf. It was her dream job. She loved okay. all the pop- Loved the comedy stylings of Earwolf. She loved everything there. Yeah, I love uh, Earwolf. She loved everything about it. And this is going to be told now because we're 10 years removed, and I think she hates me anyway. I always <laughs> love the world of Katie. I think she's great. So she goes over there, and they have this weird co-manager who got into it with Scott Alkerman, the head of the network who created it. Mm-hmm. And eventually they had a lawsuit and a breakup like all the podcast networks did. Yeah. She gets over there. This guy's a total asshole. He's like condescending, sexist, rude, piece of shit. Fires her the first week. Oh, Wow. She confides in me. Like I think she like walked off, so she didn't technically get fired. Basically, it was it was not a good place. And I, I'm like, go back to Corolla. She's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going back there. I didn't know the stuff with Donnie that she probably had her own things with Donnie. How shitty those people were to her, and she didn't want to be back there. It wasn't about Adam. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, come on, you can't you can't give up on this. You're you're like the podcast. You're like the new podcast producer in this town. You got to do this. This is your career. And Who else had like, she I'll, been I'll podcasting for? Like, what made her so? Like she was just her... good. She was great. Everybody okay. wanted. She was like okay. Earwolf wanted a poacher. Like she was, okay. She's a chick. She's a producer. She's attractive. Uh, she's funny. Like it's like all the things you would want. Like it, it just yeah. hits all the boxes of like you, normally. There's there's a bunch of overweight white guys who produce podcasts. Nobody wants them. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they want somebody who's unique and can do this. And she she she, she also had the talent. She was better than Donnie. She was better than anybody at the network. She was better than Logan. She was the best producer at the network. So mm-hmm. I, I'm like, come on, you got to do something. And I always butt in and try to like help and do things. People get mad at me. So I told Adam what happened, not like the tattletale. I was like, Hey, Ace man, what if you called uh, Chris Hardwick and Nerdist? Do you think, you think you're doing anything? So I'll do it right now. Calls Nerdist. Nerdist hires Katie. She works there, I think uh, for over 10 years. And now she currently still works with him. Uh, she bought a house, got a career, life, dog, boyfriend of 10 years. Uh, she, after she gets the call, she calls me up, tells me what piece of shit she, I am, how much she hates me how I butt in her life. I should never have said anything or done anything. And she can do her own deals, you know, blah, blah, blah. People always do that to me. And just kind of goes off on me and uh, never talks since. Then she went on wow. the after disaster about a month later. Oh, and really? She started ranting while drunk about like random people she doesn't like. She goes, and I know what you shit your pants, dude. So why don't you watch your mouth? Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know that happened. I just heard that after disaster like oh, a month or two ago. I never even knew that aired. And I was just like, wow. oh, now I'm sad a decade later. And all I did was just try to step in to help out because she was treated so unfairly. But yeah. like, you can't, people don't want you to do that. But it no. did lead to like her working there. Maybe she would have thought of like to ask Adam herself, but nobody ever does that. I don't know, man. So that, that's what happened with Katie. That's who that was. And uh, that, that's, uh, so, anyways, back to the, the 2011. Dude would never have been paid a dollar. The illegal contract, they won't sign because they won't be paid till they sign the contract. It takes full ownership. The, the film vault leaves Ace Broadcasting. Uh, mm-hmm. Logan was also leaving for other reasons we can't get into. But oh. he just wasn't going to work there anymore. And they were siding with their producer being loyal to him as well. So it was wow. like, we, we already weren't going to sign this contract. We didn't know how to get out of this. And Logan's leaving, so we're going to leave with him. So mm-hmm. we saw a sign of solidarity. They leave with him, even though it was much more than that. Hmm. So I'm going to propose by Donnie and saying we're trying to illegally hijack out of Yeah, they want over 50% owner. They want a full ownership over 50% of the money. They didn't pay him for any of those episodes. They made a ton of cash. Uh, Anderson always argues about why they had to be listed as comedy. Mike Chomfy did that as a strategic move. Back in the day, nobody was going in the other categories of iTunes podcasting, only comedy. Even mm. Joe Rogan's podcast, he's a comedian. His show isn't funny. It's never been funny. It's just not, it's not, not even being an insult. He just doesn't okay. want to, like, people tell jokes. He yells at people for telling jokes and make those wah, wah, wah. And they tell yeah. a joke on a show. Like literally it's a thing. All the comedians talk about it. It can be funny when he thinks things are funny. When he's saying that uh, the movie theater he was in uh, was like Planet of the Apes because it was all African-American viewers. <laughs> I remember hearing that live and going, yeah, that's going to come back to haunt you in 10 years, buddy. One day, and, yeah. Uh, but I mean, like that's just, that's just, everything was in comedy podcast categories. They put the film vault there. And instead of having a couple hundred or a thousand listeners, like everything else in TV and film, 40,000 listeners immediately. So they got a ton of people hearing them. And there was lots of opinions and lots of carryover of like, oh, this is that asshole Anderson Adam hates. Well, I hate you too, bro, because I mm. love the ace man. Yeah. I don't care that none of that's true. Or people like, Brian should have died of cancer. Like, that still happens to this day. Oh, my God. Fuck, fuck, brutal. fuck those people. That's where the Frank comes from and all those fake names they use. Yeah, all Frank, those yeah. Reviews for people who were saying things about the show. Like, they're still, like, that still haunts Brian Anderson to this day. Yeah. So 2011, 
Film Vault continues on as an independent podcast as we know it today that showed extreme character and loyalty to keep the producer and uh, continue the continuity of the listening experience for us fans. Yeah. Eventually, Logan left because uh, money things with Anderson not having any more gigs and then Anderson being able to do those jobs, even though it's a small amount of money. I think he had a percentage. I'm not well, he went to was. Sony, too. He got a he, he got more a, work and more jobs yeah, and he had he more a, time commitments. And so there's less time they could all meet up and record. So mm-hmm. it was kind of win, win, win. And then also I think they were getting like that thing of familiarity, breathe the contempt, like we've been on the film vault 10 years. It's only getting this big. It's never going to get bigger than this. Yeah. What is this? It, it's kind of an albatross. If you're trying to start a career. So now when kind... on, Sorry. I agree. Yeah. No, I'm with you hundred percent. But now when they're on air together, it's so magical. It's like, now I want more yeah. Logan. <laughs> like, I love oh Logan. yeah. The, he, Logan was great. He was great. I love, I love Avery. I didn't. Oh, nope. I don't want Avery gone. Avery's the best. Yeah. I, at so first I was kind of like, eh, but also when anything new happens, it's a, uh, uh, what's up? No, I can't think of the word, but it's, it's a stepping stone, right? You got, you, you got to go through and especially with a show we've had low had Logan for 10 years. And then all of a sudden there's this new guy. You're kind of like, eh, no thanks. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I think Logan was like nine years or eight and a half. But everything, I think, was a bit, a little bit too with the fans. Like Anderson and Brian do that as well. Like, you know, if they're mean to the guy, then the fans will defend him, that kind of thing. I just wasn't yeah. playing. I like Avery. Even when he Me says too. him, I disagree. I, him. I still like him. So I, yeah. he's really talented. He's a fully yeah. formed uh, stand up comedian as well. I always yeah. want to compliment him, but I don't want to insult him. <laughs> if you look at his stage presence, he has perfect stage presence. He it's does. I've, I've watched stand up. Yeah. His writing, every time I see him, is better and better. And that's the thing that evolves over time so like having stage presence is like yeah. that's the hardest part of the fight like he's he's already there so he's yeah. gonna blow up as a comedian they better they better latch on to this guy or get as much as they can out of him before he's gone oh that's that'd be awesome he's great and uh Super i can tell dumb. his humor is just really smart and you can oh yeah he, he doesn't talk a ton on tfv but like you can tell that you can blow your mind with a sentence or make you laugh with a sentence yes he, his reaction on the tfe bonus episode when anderson's reading a list of the victims in barbarian <laughs> and then he says asian bitch which is asian dash bitch by the way so it was, i don't think it was about her race like he was saying she's an asian woman and she happens to also be bitchy yeah just right. for record sake. <laughs> the guy might not have been a racist that way <laughs> but I, when he, he read probably that, then, then, was yeah, he, oh no, he definitely was. He was a very, very bad man. He's, he's everything is horrible. Yeah. So then Avery just started laughing uncontrollably. Somebody on a uh, post on Patreon, like top 10 or top five TFE moments, it was. And like nobody knows that happened unless you're a patron. I was begging Anderson to release it. It's such a great tease to get you on Patreon too. Like, here's yeah. what we do over there. Check yeah. out the spoiler episode. And hopefully they're filming those because then we can use those on TikTok and 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 some of those funny things can be brought, can reel people in. But yeah, video component is necessary nowadays to reel anybody in for a podcast. The only way a podcast can blow up is with video. Basically, Rogan took over the model and then abandoned it, and now everybody's trying to fill that gap outside of Spotify. Which I thought YouTube was dead. Like I thought, like YouTube was. Oh, I did too. Out. I thought YouTube was okay. dead before YouTube was alive. I was I was denigrating YouTube in 2008. I was like, fucking YouTube, these dorks on YouTube. Oh, um, you, I've never watched YouTube. My life depended on it. I, now in, I watch YouTube more than anything. For me, it's like the last few years. It's just been like. YouTube is still growing and growing oh, yeah. like huge. I watch YouTube more than any other TV show. Anybody. Really? I, I don't. I like never watch YouTube. And I never did. I, it, all it took my, over my life. nieces and nephews and like younger friends, like, what are you watching? Oh, just YouTube. And they watch their influencers they love. And I'm like, God, I, I must be old because I either wanted to watch a movie or a TV show. I don't need to watch what other people are doing. I don't give a fuck. I, I'm I'm somewhere in between now because I've, I've really burnt out on other people's opinions, especially when it comes to MCU stuff, uh, just because people <laughs> are not that educated about it. And then also I have this complex where my entire life I've never been able to have or do anything. And it's all uh, a series of circumstantial things and it's, it's not reality. Mm-hmm. But drowning and dying as an infant, uh, being run over as a kid, being left for dead, all the ways that I've just kind of been uh, wow. essentially my entire life. I've been made to feel like, Oh dude, your mom was re- rendered infertile in a uh, drunk driving accident on her way to the last uh, month of deep sea diver school. And her best friend was killed in her lap and his tooth went in her skull and she could never menstruate again. And the doctors oh, told her wow. she couldn't menstruate or um, see the word I'm looking for. Uh, uh, have a child birth. No, no, no. The, the other term uh, during the cycle, during the month when it's a uh, time when you're fertile, Ovulate. As a word, I, a word I know, and I can't think of it at the time. I don't know what's going on wrong with me. I'm going ovulate? 
Yep, ovulate. There you go. Yeah. She couldn't menstruate or ovulate. Mm-hmm. And the doctors told her that. And so she went on for years, like having living boyfriends, being a, an adult woman. And mm-hmm. then she met my father, uh, who asked her for her French fries at some random place. They went on one date. It was the worst eight minutes of her life, she's told me many, many times. <laughs> and uh, he was a virgin and uh, she oh, was God. infertile. And then seven months later, she's gigantic. And they've told her it's a ball of mucus, a parasite, blah, blah, blah. They finally check it. Oh, you're pregnant. Well, that's impossible. Do people, and, uh, you should get that engraved. When you die a hundred years from now, Giovanni. <laughs> reverse Jesus. Ball, ball of mucus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a parasite or something. Bitch. Parasite, ball of, mu- ball of mucus. Yeah, it ended up with my mom having to, my dad didn't even show up. He showed up to watch an episode of Kung Fu in the delivery room which I found out was in reruns at the time. It had been mm-hmm. six years since it actually aired. So he'd probably already seen this episode of Kung Fu. At the very least, it was not important to watch rather than the birth of your son or hang out your son. He just showed up at the end. And then my mom had to drive herself uh, home from a C-section with a naked baby oh hanging God. off her breast in a pickup truck uh, with oh no seat. Yeah, yeah, it's see- my life. I've just had this whole thing in my life of I'm not allowed to have anything or do anything. And so the whole idea of people like denigrating Marvel movies, like the biggest thing in the world is MCU movies. And even that, people are like, let's just get rid of those. Uh, we'll we'll like, definitely get into that in the next episode. But I know. Um, so that, that's why I've been cutting back on YouTube content because everyone's opinion now, if, even if it's not talking about Marvel, I'm watching a tech yeah. show about level one techs talking about how to do like data entry and like yeah. uh, IT support. And they're like, yeah, these Marvel movies are terrible. And I'm like, yeah, get, get, shut, shut the up. fuck up. I know. You know what I'm, you're talking about? Stop. I'm right there Go with you. Trust me. For me. Yeah. Um, wow, I almost want to dive deep into some of some of your upbringing, but like, uh... there's an entire episode of the Doctor Drew podcast, episode thirty-seven. I'll link you. If it's not posted, I'll put it oh, in the file. Okay. It's still up. It's my entire backstory compressed. I wow. shared it on air, and everybody just makes fun of me for being run over as a little kid now. Oh my god! I would well, never do to anybody. I just got to say, I'm really sorry to hear that, but you have obviously grown, and your memory oh, is I'm amazing. Fine with it. Yeah. I actually yeah. I interviewed my dad and my mom to prove it, and I asked oh. my mom. I was like, "Hey, uh, people online don't believe that I was running right." So you have a so good like... relationship with your dad? No, or... not at all. Oh, okay. Uh, I, he's like a guy. I've met him 24 times. <laughs> it's a funny story about my dad. He's a film director. <laughs> mm. Oh. He abandoned really? me so he could direct films. Uh, he didn't okay. want a kid. They accused my mom of baby trapping him, even though it's impossible. Oh she had God. no idea. Uh, so they wouldn't acknowledge my existence. Uh, wouldn't pay child support. Wouldn't do anything. He went to the Cannes Film Festival every year of my life. He only had a mm. movie two years he went. He went mm. over 30 times. Good movies? Or what are we? No. One of them was no. uh, Wild Child, which is basically a ripoff of like uh, The Babysitter or those kind of movies. You know, like okay. The Crush. That kind of thing. Teenage Girl Obsessed. What she year? Made, cheaply made. Then there was, uh, this is like 90, and then there, okay. there's another one before that that's like, a, uh, it's not bad touch, bad, is it, there's another movie that has like bad something, and it's like that, and it's also a ripoff. And then he made bad one called touch. Good Teeth in 2005, super low budget, that's basically the slave trade never ended, and people still trade slaves. Oh. Great script, uh, no budget, and it was shot for three, so it does not look like a movie. Oh no, that's, that's not good. I know, I told him why'd you waste your time. Anyway, so I met the dude like 24 times, maybe less. Every time we, we hang out, we go see a movie. He's never sat through a single movie in its entirety, including Bad Moon, 1996 werewolf movie, Mariel Hemingway. It's, I think it's 79 minutes, 78 minutes. It's yeah. barely a movie with credits. He walked out of that. It's a great movie. It's Mason Gamble, a kid played Dennis uh, the Menace, uh, like 13 years old, fighting his werewolf uncle. What and there's there... a dog in it. Oh, dude, let's go, I have to say this. There's a dog in it named uh, Primo, and he's Primo. playing Thor. This is based off a book called Thor. The book is oh. from the dog's POV of Doberman about his owner's brother coming back who's a werewolf and him having to protect the family. And the dog, the book's written from the dog's POV. And they can't do the movie that way, but the dog's a character and this dog <laughs> called Primo played him, just one dog. He's the best dog actor I've ever seen in my fucking life. He has reactions with his teeth. He'll like pull his teeth back and what? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> That's, like he's he's uh... respecting this, this man of being a werewolf. And he's like investigating his trailer and stuff. And he's like watching him. I, I can't. You have to watch a movie. It's crazy. But nothing, why did the, why like did your dad walk out? Why why couldn't he finish a movie? I used what? to think he had a coke problem. I actually had dress with my mom, oh. and then he, she brought up, and he, no, he just doesn't like movies. And he doesn't like anything. And then it was before cell phones, so he wasn't even calling his living <laughs> girlfriend. She's a paralyzed yeah. his common law wife, I guess, of like thirty years. Oh, wow. And he calls her all the time, and like he, he's on a leash, like Drew is. So it's partly that. But before that, it wasn't that. Long kiss goodnight he walked out of. Long kiss goodnight, Jeez, long bro. Long kiss goodnight. What's wrong Come with you? on. Uh, so are they both still alive, your mom and your First dad? First Wives Club. 
He walked out of First Wives Club. Oh. Granted, that may have made, made, gave some weird feelings, but still, he didn't date my mom. He wasn't married to her. What the fuck? No. Yeah. True. Are they both still alive, your parents? Yeah, they're both alive. He's in Portland. Uh, he's still trying. He thinks one day he's going to get a hit movie. And then recently he revealed to me his plan was to go to Cannes and, like, be Harvey Weinstein. Like, buy and sell films and just be, like, a player. Like, if an idiot like that can do it, why can't I? And no. I, I can't even begin to explain him why that's the no dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire be... life. And he wasted yeah. his life and he's a fucking moron. And if he wanted to be a yeah. film director, I could have shown him how. And I myself wanted to be a director, but I completely ditched the ambition or idea because I didn't want to be anything like him. Oh wow, well, yeah. No, that can have that can have its effects. <laughs> yeah, so I just decide I don't want to be anything like that person, so I will just uh enjoy the things I love. I don't need to make them. Yeah. Um I have two more things to ask you before we take a well, we end this show and then we move over to the superhero movies if you're still good Please. with that. Oh, I'm still good. If you're still good, buddy, this is my favorite thing in the world. This I is... love this. I feel like I'm downloading all the things that people need to know. I feel like the two I people who go, this. there's like two people in the chat when we do those live watch alongs where yeah. they say, Geo, like they'll go, oh, and like, I won't ever comment on it, but like, it hurts my feelings. And I think they're like, think I'm like what? a self aggrandizing person who wants to be famous. They don't know this. I asked Brian Anderson to stop thanking me because I didn't want those people to have to hear my name because it makes me feel bad. I know Brian Anderson liked me. I don't need to hear him thank me. And I much prefer if I come up organically, like in the email thing, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. Geo Johnny stuff or something. It's it's funner. Like I don't I don't care if I come up at all, but I'd rather just not mention me. Mention another fan who does stuff, you know, at the end who's like cool. Like that's how I got to know you. I didn't know you. Yeah. I just kept hearing Mitch Burns all the time. Yeah. And then I saw your post on Facebook about like why does Anderson talk about super movies and you hate him? Why does he not talk about him at all? And I oh, misinterpret yeah. it. Because Sometimes I'm I get so angry. No, no, you're right. But I, I misinterpret because I'm so sensitive. I'm like, this motherfucker doesn't want Andrew to talk about superhero movies. It's all I got. And But it's because you love them so much like yes. I do. So then yes. I wrote to Anderson, Brian, I'm like, who's this Mitch Burns guy? Or You Mitch literally Kearns. asked them? Oh, my I go, God. Yeah, this I guess Mitch Kearns guy trying to tell me not to watch movies anymore. And they're like, oh, no, Mitch is this. And then you wrote to me immediately for no reason. I think I just commented something, but it was, it was nice. And you were the nicest man in the world. I always and I respond. Like, oh. I yeah. And then I wrote back to Anderson. I go, oh, cancel the bit. I wanted to do a bit where I was going after Mitch Kearns and I was mean to Mitch and I was gonna like call <sighs> names and be rude and be like I hate Mitch. And then I was like, he's the nicest dude in the world. I love Mitch. I love Mitch. Cancel, cancel the bit. I don't want to do the bit. It's not, it's not funny. <laughs> I uh, it's actually funny because I literally just emailed them about two weeks ago and said, hey, you guys ha- like now that I'm doing the listener list and this, I'm like just stop. You stop bringing up my name. Don't bring it up any. Just don't bring it up anymore. I don't need all the praise. Like, thank you, but you know, it's, I I enjoy doing it. And We're the like, same dude, Mitch. We're the yeah, same dude. A- Avery emailed me. He's like, "Fuck that! I'm gonna bring it up more now." And I'm like, "Okay." I also grab dudes' cocks at movie theaters. I mean, what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're the same guy. Um, yeah, and then so the other question I have and. This is just me being dumb because I don't listen to the after disaster. I don't. Oh. I have never listened to an episode, which is you can so jump weird. in any time if you want to. Yeah, I will. It's just now a conversation. I... There's no continuity. Avery okay. comes from the after disaster. He was a fan, and he came oh. on the blacker disaster, which they still talk about. Mm-hmm. But they talk about in a way like it's kind of like pathetic white guy. Like we had these three black guys on. It was like a really great. It's like you know it's a fine episode, but like you guys didn't solve the world's problems. Like like it's just an episode of After Disaster. Like you're not heroes for having three black fans on. Like so like it's a weird you thing. love the after after disaster too, right? Oh yeah, it's or, a great show. Okay, it's a perfect podcast. Okay, and was Doctor Drew ever a part of it or still? He is? would make cameos because they record okay. after Love Line. So if he wasn't out of the building, you could give him for a couple seconds. They'd also okay. get callers who were calling in. They they play him. They weren't allowed to do that. It mm-hmm. quickly became like, oh, you guys can't be doing this here anymore. You have to take it away from Loveline. So it's still the after disaster, but it, it quickly had nothing to do with Loveline. Okay. And are Anderson Bryant or Anderson at the most, is he still friends with Dr. Drew or is that tailed off? As we talked about in the bonus episode, they haven't really spoken since Drew bailed on the premiere. Okay. Uh, Anderson was hurt by that. Right. Uh, he was really like... He, overwhelmed yeah. by adam watching the movie and then telling him only anderson could make it which also yeah. I, I got anderson booked I, I i wrote to adam like hey man us love line fans never get anything uh you've had anderson on a few times <laughs> he's been on the acs a few times one time donnie ruined it because he couldn't tell adam if they were doing an episode of the film vault and adam was the guest or if they're doing an episode of the acs and they were the guests hmm. so literally there's a 40 minute episode from right in the orange couch days where adam scream at donnie what show am i on <laughs> <laughs> and Anderson's like, oh my god, this is so uncomfortable. Yeah. And they just, the episode just went down the tubes. It was nothing. It was like 40 minutes long. It was an abortion. They still aired it uh, as an ACS episode. 
Wow. And then he was on again, and it was a more standard episode, pretty good, but it was still like 2011 Anderson and, and Adams vibe. Yeah. So it, it, it flowed okay, but when he came back on 2020, yeah. uh, wow. Like he came on that, he did the Adam and Drew show. I got him on there, and that was pretty good. But then when he came yeah. on the ACS in 2020, right before COVID blew up, that changed Anderson's life and his whole dynamic with Adam. I, that one, I completely changed uh, their entire uh, That's journey. That's amazing. Yeah, I fucking I went over there. I slapped that timeline, and it fucking went a different direction. Yeah, no, I'm really, I am really, I'm, I don't love Corolla, but I am really glad that happened, and for Anderson, oh, yeah. for Brian, for Corolla, it just all the fans. It's exactly. like the most healing thing possible. Like they took away all like Anderson's like stuff of oh, I's a bad guy, you should have fired me. Yeah, Adam doesn't give a shit about any of that. And I tell him every time he says something nice about him, Adam doesn't even reply. I was like, hey, mm-hmm. man, uh, Anderson was saying what a great guy you are. Because <laughs> Anderson likes to joke, but these things do get to him. Oh yeah, no, they do. He, he is... hasn't talked to Drew since he didn't go to the premiere, and he yeah. forbid me from telling Drew that, so I'm not going to. But I happened to tell it to Andrew to Chris, and Andrew mm-hmm. Chris got sad, and he goes, well, I can tell Drew, and I go. I guess I can't stop you. I guess that's true. Yeah. Mm. And does B- Brian still has a connection with Dr. Drew? No, I've Drew. No. Uh, Drew got him fired, uh, even though he didn't really, but that happened. And then when yeah. he was diagnosed, uh, he t- Adam told Drew, and Drew goes, six months on. Huh? He goes, yeah, that's probably right. I tell him, prepare, you know, get ready. You know, Jesus. Start digging a grave. Give okay. him a shovel, Adam. Uh, tell his wife to dig oh, all he fuck. wants. He wasn't that mean, but he was, he was basically. Yeah, like, no, no, I. No. But when you knew someone and you decide to not reach out he's just true though he's honest it's his yeah. bedside matter he's not gonna lie to yeah you. and i i don't know much about Dude, the you guy, got rebar in your asshole you're gonna die i'm sorry yeah yeah so as we were talking you just kind of looked at one thing here this month is also the three-year anniversary is of when i started on the show doing all my stuff so oh, very cool yeah just to bring it up and bring it full circle so uh, th- a three. I mean, three years. Sorry, did I say three months? No, I maybe I don't know, but yeah, it's three years. Uh, it's yeah. I feel like I've been hearing about you much longer. Anderson was probably name dropping you before that. Yeah, I was always. Do you want to hear something crazy? Do you Do you remember? Uh, you pro- I don't know if you if if you remember, but there was a long time ago where they read a, a someone who reviewed them, not Bill's Emporium, but someone else. Yeah. Who reviewed them and they gave them a really nice review and they read it on air. That I was me. Remember this? That was me. So this is 2012? Yeah, 2012. I'd started listening, 2011, whatever. And I had a blog like the Hollywood Persona when it was first starting. I remember the Hollywood Persona. I remember yeah. this. So, and the and reviews I, from the Hollywood Persona. Yeah, I still had the review. And that's this. the first time I was mentioned. And this was 2011, over 10 years ago. Like, so... And, so and you know, so I, just... I had no idea like who you were, or how you're connected with, and none of the film vault fans I think we do know each other. There's so many people listening to the show, I have no idea. Yeah. John yeah. Show was listening for a while, nobody still does. Yeah, uh, who was... knows? Yeah, you'd be it's surprised. Like... People, people oh, listen you... to a lot of shows, they just don't tell you. Like, why am I gonna tell you that I'm your celebrity listener? I don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Especially when they find out that like their little movie has been brought up, they'll they'll slip in. Like, I I reviewed a movie this year called What Josiah Saw, a horror oh. movie that I really loved. The director followed me on Letterboxd it. and followed me on Instagram because uh, he liked my reviews so much. And I was like, I'm going to go write oh. one on Letterboxd and say if the director doesn't follow me, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I don't even know the director's name right now, but I've seen all his movies. He makes really good movies, but they're really dark and depressing. And that's my, uh, that's my kind of thing. I like it. I'm right there with you, buddy. That's my kind yeah. of thing too. Okay, everyone. So thank you for listening to the Film Vaulters. Um, I'm going to post this on Monday, which will be the third, fourth, which will be the fifth. So you'll be listening to this on the fifth. And then on Friday, I will be posting our top five superhero movies. Uh, Gio, obviously, we need to hear his take on the top five superhero movies. I'm really excited. I'm going to cheat. You're going to cheat? Oh, I'm going to cheat. Oh, there can't be TV shows. Not that way. Okay, way okay, choose. okay. So I'm Mitch Burns. You can find me at the Hollywood Persona on Facebook. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, I have all my links in the bio there. It's at the Hollywood Persona. Um, we also ha- I have my own podcast, which is the Hollywood Persona. I will stop saying that, but you can find me everywhere. Uh, Gio, where can people find you if they wanted to listen to your podcast or follow you? Just type GIO for a while. You'll eventually find me. <laughs> 
<laughs> to my name like three times. Uh, just go to, uh, I guess the simplest way is uh, superfangiovanni.com. It's my website. It's got all links to everything. To your podcast. If you want to any of the shows I do or any of the Love Line or Restore or anything else I do, it's all found there. And if you want okay. to find me on Instagram, Giovanni Giorgio, hit me up. I'll help you out. Find clips. I'll explain something to you. Or That's exciting. Tell you why yeah. Anderson said that mean thing about me 10 years ago. And now we're best friends. And it's all a water under the bridge. It had to evolve as it had to evolve. It's amazing. I love oh, it. Oh, by the way, I Bitch Kearns, it. is that my fault? Maybe. They call I me. I sent it to Brian and Anderson after your Facebook post about Anderson not watching superhero movies. And Avery says it all the time now. He was not in the email chain. They would have had to uh, say it to Avery. Bitch Murns? Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think I did Kearns. I think I did a K. Oh, well, I know Avery has changed it now to Bitch Murns. Okay. And that's what so he Maybe it's says. not my fault. Maybe he's just maybe, maybe I don't know. the two. And I like that. I'd rather that. The thing that bothers me is the V Mitch Burns because I had drunkenly sent the fan flictions in one night. And huh. I just so and so I'm sending this email and at the end I'm like signed the in capitals Mitch Burns. Like I'm like and then I and then you're gonna still hold this against me for forty oh my years. God. Yeah, exactly. Now it's been it's not bad though. Uh engineer Chris, who is uh Logan's cousin who came onto the Corolla show. I think his cousin yeah, no, he's not his cousin, he's his friend cousin one of the two uh they're, they're both asian dudes who know each other through nepotism he okay. came on the corolla show he's the current corolla producer he stuck around his nickname is his name is chris loxamana adam couldn't remember his last name at the beginning so he calls him chris max zapata <laughs> I, I chris does you... not understand he's like but why chris is not max, he's like give me max any nickname zapata. why max zapata that's amazing yeah it's great okay ladies and gentlemen we will see you friday thank you for listening goodbye um okay geo so i'm gonna are you okay if i end this and yeah. send you another invite so that this yeah. one starts downloading yeah let me uh let me stop this guy over here on my end so i stop recording okay because i just want to i just want to make sure it yes yeah, so, so we, we, we commit what we got we don't lose what we got yeah exactly i just want to make sure it's there before we start i keep going and then it's another and then it's at three hours right so i uh, exactly what i do with you I'm okay save this and, as a and if you can't do it, we can do the superhero part another day. Unless you're oh, I'm totally good. If you're not good, okay, you're good. I'm you're great. Not, not taking my time. No, I'll I'm talk to great. You until I die. Okay, perfect. We will. I'm stuck in my be... office all night, and I finished all my work, so I have nothing to do. Stuck in your office? Why? I've been doing 15 hour days uh, since November. I did. I did. I worked. Uh, technically, I can only work 494 hours legally, 16 hours per day, uh, in <laughs> January, and there's 744 hours. But I also have my vacation, so I work through my vacation. Oh. So I technically worked 545 hours of 744 hours in a month. So I get what you mean by chained to your desk. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So I can't go anywhere until the ship's over, but all my work's done. Okay. So technically, don't tell anybody I'm being paid. <laughs> am I am I gonna get you fired? No. Okay. Take in trouble. I I uh, we have to do so much work per day, yeah. but I can't exceed too much. So like my fellow That's workers so can do work. four cases per hour at most. Mm. That's what they have to average, and I can do 40. So hmm. if I go full speed, I take all the work and nobody can get work done. But because Jeez. of seniority, they can't fire me. So they just ask me to go on a balanced pace because I'm so much better at emails than my peers who are old. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to end this. Uh, I'm going to take a piss, grab another beer, and uh, I will just send you a new invite, okay? Sweet. Uh, recording saved on my side, ready to go when you're back. Okay, thank you, Gio. Thank BRB. You.